Welcome back, everybody. So good to see you again. Before we get started with our Hades run, I'm going to explain where your donations might be going right now. So I don't know if y'all noticed, but we have an incentive for the Hades run that is called Pet the Dog. Who would have thought, okay? <laughs> we are already at $15,000 for that incentive. And so what this incentive means is that every time we hit $3,000, our runners are going to have to pet Cerberus who is such a cutie, you definitely want to be sending in donations for this incentive. So we are already at five pets that the runners will have to do, and we can get up to 30 pets for good boy Cerberus if we hit that $90,000 incentive. So let's see those pet the dog donations come in. All right, so we are ready to get started with our Hades race. Take it away, Seagull and Tonus. Good morning, everyone. I'm Tonis. Just want to give a quick shout out to everyone here in Finland who stayed up or woke up to see this for me. So thanks, everybody. Uh, good evening, everyone. Hey, everyone. I'm, uh, I'm Siegel, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here with uh, with Tonus, and I'll be racing this fantastic game for all of you. And we have two fantastic commentators. All right, everyone, we are going to read a couple donations while we sort them some things out over here. So we have $50 from Aki and Sen who say, pet that dog. <laughs> we have another $50 from Anonymous who says, thou shalt pet the dog. <laughs> I think we're seeing a common theme here, hey? <laughs> We have $25 from Bins who says, pet the boy. I see so many people excited for the Cerberus pets. And I know I am super excited too. He was definitely my favorite part of the playthrough. All right. We have $100 from Adam who says, hello, little cousin. Here's a boon to aid you on your journey. <laughs> Thank you so much, Adam. We have $250 from Blue Frog, who says, Hades is one of the greatest video games of all time, and anyone who has not played this game owes it to themselves to give it a try. Best of luck to the runners, and let's hit $2 million. Thank you so much, Blue Frog. We have... $50 from Forrest Kami, who says, Hey there, boss. Delivery for you to go even faster. Maybe someday you'll be as fast as me. From Hermes. Where do I start? Donation team, you're awesome. Your patience for reading all of these are godly. Tech team, stellar work. Keep doing what you're doing. We know it's never happened before. I've been watching GDQ for years. They've become landmarks in my year, especially getting my doctorate and then in plague times. Every year, I have a new family member dealing with cancer. So this is for them, my grandfathers, aunts, and uncles. Donation for Hades incentive to pet the dog because Cerberus is the best boy. Someday, I'll be more active in the speedrun discord instead of just lurking. Thanks so much, Forrest Kami. We're excited to see you run someday. We have $50 from Ash Condi who says, Pet that dog. <laughs> So just to check up, we have already hit $20,000 in our pet the dog incentive, which means if I can do math, <laughs> we're about to hit seven pets, I think. Oh, and there we go. That is seven pets already. So our runners are going to be very busy for this run. All right, it sounds like we are ready to get back to our race, so hold tight, and we're going to have Seagull and Tonus take it away.
Do we start hey, over? Is that the thing? Uh, yeah, we're, we're back back to the race. Uh, she wanted to introduce our commentators, uh, Vareem, previous GDQ runner for Hades last year, and uh, Lat Millard, prolific Hades speedrunner and Twitch streamer. Yes, hello and welcome everyone. My name's Lat Millard. Welcome to the Hades All Weapons Race. For those of you not familiar with Hades, it's a roguelike starring Zagreus, the son of Hades, who wants to escape his life in the underworld, but he will not be able to go alone. He will need the help of the Olympian gods who will impart powerful boons and give him the strength needed to escape the underworld. And so uh, in the all weapons category, our racer, Siegel and Tonus, are going to complete a run with each of the six infernal arms. And so we will see them travel through the four biomes of the underworld, Tartarus, Asphodel, Elysium, and the Temple of Styx. And each biome will contain a number of combat encounters where they must defeat each enemy before they can move on. And uh, there are many paths through the underworld. The underworld, uh, the, 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 the racers will need to adapt the room rewards being offered and choose the paths that best suit the weapon and build that they're going for. Some rewards can be as simple as money to spend in a shop or a pomegranate to level up their boons, where others, like the Hammers of Daedalus, will fundamentally change how the weapons play. And for those of you that are familiar with Hades, you may notice that some elements are slightly different than what you're used to seeing, and that's because for races, we actually make a few modifications to the game in order to even out some of the RNG to allow the player's skill to really shine through. It's just, speaking of the player's skill, the two players, the two racers that we have for you tonight are incredible runners. Just absolute cream of the crop. We couldn't have picked two better people to showcase this video game for, for all of you. It's going to be an absolute treat. I'm so excited to get into it. Is there anything else we wanted to get into before we do a countdown? I'll just say quickly, uh, sorry, for the for the petting Cerberus, we are already uh, at oh boy, eight. So next available time, you can get started whenever. <laughs> All right. Well, if we head over to our Pact of Punishment, you'll see we have a few things already selected. We'll talk about that in a little while, but uh, I guess, racers, are you ready? Yep, I am ready. All right, we are starting in three, two, one, go. Again. Good luck, We're starting our gauntlet of six weapons with uh, with the fists, the aspect of Demeter. Each weapon in Hades has uh, four different aspects that slightly vary the play style, uh, really just lengthens the content of this game. This game's incredible. I'm sure most of you already know that. Uh, we're all just such huge fans of this game. We're so excited that we're bringing it to you tonight. Absolutely. And so, the the fists. What build do you think they're going to be looking for here, Vareem? Yeah. So uh, so on the uh, on the fists, <laughs> there's there's not a whole lot of variety. Uh, it's actually one of the the, the strictest weapons in uh, in Hades speedrunning, because the only thing that that really works super super well is a a powerful duo boon, which is a boon uh, that combines the powers of two different Olympian gods. Uh, in this case called Merciful End. Do you want to explain Merciful End? Yeah, absolutely. So Merciful End is the combination between the Ares boons and the Athena boons. And so uh, when, when we talk about boons, what we're actually talking about is the different ways that you can uh, damage enemies, right? So you have attack, you have a special, and you have a dash, and you have a cast. Those are the main ways that we're, that we're interacting with the game. And so our attack, we want to have the Ares, uh, Ares attack boon, it's called Doom. And what that does is it actually leaves uh, basically, I guess it's kind of a dot uh, damage over time on, wow. wow. I'm sorry yeah, to interrupt. Are, but... Things are looking good. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of, how, how do you put together the Merciful End combo? You need attack from Ares, you need special from Athena, which uh, oh like, my lord! Wow, and there and there it is. So those are those are the two prereqs, and uh, it looks like we Seagull have is off to a yeah, flying off start to an here. Incredible start here. No pun intended. <laughs> oh, but did you get flying cutter or something? No, this seagull. Oh, yep. 
went over my head. Hey. Uh, <laughs> uh, wow, and a fountain into a Sisyphus. So there are there are many different uh, types of chambers that you'll run into. Lat talked a little bit about that before we started, but you'll have these combat encounters that Tonus is in right now. You'll have these story encounters that Seagull is in right now. And... Uh, you know, a few other things like a fountain chamber. Uh, generally speaking, you want as many non-combat encounters as possible because killing enemies is slow. Uh, and these runners want to get out of here as quickly as possible. <laughs> so uh, in order to get out of these rooms quickly, they're going to be doing um, some, some enemy manipulation. Um, one of the, the, the most important skills in Hades speedrunning is knowing where enemies can spawn and how to manipulate them to spawn where you want. Um, Basically, you want everything to spawn in a nice big clump so you can DPS it down and get through that room as fast as you can. Absolutely. And so uh, we're actually we're talking about Seagull having a, a great build and looking like he's off to a fantastic start. Tonus, however, is actually in the mini boss or the, uh, the final boss for our first biome, Tartarus. And, and that's the, uh, the general structure of the game is you go through some number of chambers and you're going to fight a boss at the end of that biome before you can move on to the next area. Back, and so here we can see Tonus taking care of Megara the Fury and uh, Seagull, on the other hand, walking into uh, his own Fury fight against Tisiphone here. Yeah, and some of you may be noticing that these runners are making their decisions incredibly quickly, so quickly, in fact, that you're not going to be able to keep up and read what they're selecting. <laughs> uh, at this point, these, these runners, they're skilled enough, they can sight read everything. They basically, they'll just snap pick things before you even recognize they're on a screen. Uh, so we will be doing our very, very best to keep up and inform you of the important decisions they make. Sometimes we might miss something, and in that case, uh, hopefully Siegel and Tonus will chime in themselves and let us all know what it is they're doing. Uh, and so, it looks like Seagull just got a Light of Ix from a, from a well. Do you want to explain what Light of Ix does? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Light of Ixian actually takes you into the uh, a lower layer of the underworld, as it were, down to meet Chaos. And Chaos is one of the, the elder Chthonic gods who offers you, instead of just a reward, they offer you a reward and a curse to go along with that. So we're going to see our racers have to uh, choose wisely to make sure that the curse that they pick does not either slow them down or uh, sometimes cause them a bit too much damage and maybe uh, lose a life or two. And we can see here, oh wow, actually both racers taking a Hermes boon, which is another type of uh, interesting boon that actually changes the way that you play the game on a more meta level. And so we can see there that the Atonis was able to pick up Hyper Sprint which is a boon that gives you plus 100% movement speed anytime you dash for a, a second or so after you dash. And on the Seagull side of things, we actually saw the perfect complement to Hyper Sprint, which is Rush Delivery. And what Rush Delivery does is it gives you plus however much percent based on rarity uh, damage based on your movement speed. And so that Rush delivery and hyper sprint is going to be a combo that we want to see our racers put together as often as possible. Not now. And it looks like Tonus finally collecting that first Athena boon. Both runners are coming up toward the end of Asphodel here. They're going to fight Lerny, the Lernaean Bone Hydra, uh, who is just nicknamed by Zagreus Lerny. It's one of the best moments in the game when you're playing through it casually. It's I, I love it so much. It's such a nice touch. Um, but while they go through these last rooms, do we have any donations? We do. We actually have a $2,000 donation from Super wow. Giant Games. Ooh. Incredible. <laughs> and they say, thanks to AGDQ for featuring these Hades speedrunners. The speedrunning community has been so creative in the variety of formats they've invented since our 1.0 release. We appreciate how much ingenuity and practice goes into preparing for this. May the gods bless your IGTs. Thank you so much, Super Giant. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and <laughs> Super Giant so have much. been, they've been so wonderful to us, to the speedrunning community from, from the early access days on through release. Um, you know, several of them made guest appearances in some of our racing events. They've just been um, just wonderful. I can't say enough nice things about Super Giant. But here we are, learning Bone Hydra. Yeah, and you may notice that uh, 
This doesn't look quite like the vanilla uh, or your usual uh, Larny fight here. Usually the arena is much larger, and that's because we actually use uh, one of the Pact of Punishment to, well, we use the Extreme Measures Pact of Punishment, which changes how the boss fights work in the game. And so in all speed runs, you'll generally see the racers take Extreme Measures 2 because we get this smaller arena, which allows all of Lerny's heads to be a little more grouped up, and we get to take advantage of our area of attack boons. And there you can see both racers making short, short work of that fight. Yeah, and while we're on the topic of extreme measures, I did see before we started this that all of you were so incredible. You met that uh, donation incentive for Extreme Measures 4, and we I cannot wait for these racers to get to the back half of this run and showcase that fight. Uh, it was one of the coolest things that, that, that came out with the 1.0 update, and uh, it has, in my opinion, the best music in the game. Oh, absolutely. I'm very excited to hear that, that Extreme Measures 4 music. And so here we can see uh, the players come into Elysium. I mean, honestly, both of these builds are really, really solid, and the racers are neck and neck. You can actually see in the top right corner, uh, it actually shows you which chamber the racer is in. And you can see uh, Seagull's in 27, where Tonus is in 28. And so there is no, no difference between where the two of them are. And yeah, so we can see what Siegel actually did was uh, he was able to pick up anyway. Hyper Sprint there. So now he has that rush delivery combo and we're gonna see his damage really start to take off. Yeah, once you get Merciful End really rolling, you get a few palms, you get a source of, uh, of extra global damage. The, <laughs> the Everything just kind of melts away. Uh, it's, it's one of the most straightforward builds to play. It's really hard to put together, so we have a hard time recommending it to new runners, but when you get it together, uh, it, it's, it's really straightforward. You just dash through everything on the screen until the screen is gone. <laughs> Got you, Asterius. I think kind of interestingly, I, I see it a lot as a build that a lot of new players start with, like a lot of people's first submissions onto the speedrun.com boards are with uh, some Merciful End build. I think it might be because it's, it's more straightforward in terms of these are the boons you can take, these are the boons you don't want. And so maybe like the flow chart's a little, a little easier, but uh, it's definitely one of the harder ones to be consistent with. Definitely, and I saw a great question in chat. They're asking, why does it look like they have both types of Death Defiance? So we mentioned a little bit before the start of the run that there are some modifications here for racing. One of those is, uh, rather than the run completely ending when someone runs out of Death Defiances, they will instead go into a penalty box and they will have to live with the shame of a countdown timer on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and so. with, the, with the Extreme Measures 4 donation incentive met, who knows? We might see that happen. Hopefully not. I want to see everyone go as fast as possible, but... Uh, Absolutely. We'll, we'll certainly see what, what they can do. As someone that's been on the receiving end of both a full loss in a race before we developed this mod and and someone who's been in the, the penalty box several times, uh, neither is pleasant. <laughs> so it looks like Tonus is the first here to make it to our boss of Elysium, and that is the heroes. That's Theseus and Asterius. Theseus has some of my absolute favorite dialogue in this game. I know it's a character we love to hate, but I really love to hate Theseus. Theseus, Theseus is probably my favorite character in Hades, <laughs> and a lot of people are upset with me when I say that. He's the perfect heel. Absolutely the perfect heel. And so here, one, one thing that I do want to point out uh, about what are we looking for? You know, we, we, we want to play the game fast. We want to get all these rooms. But like when we're actually in a combat or going for, uh, you know, these really fast times, what do we want these combats to look like? And this 34 that Siegel is in is a perfect example of if you have to play the room, at least it has armored enemies and... Uh, they all are like very quick and they group up with you. And so that's really what you want to see is you want to see armored enemies because each encounter actually has a uh, basically a challenge rating associated with it. And enemies are going to keep spawning in until that challenge rating is met. Look at these so heroes armored... melt. Wow. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, but look no, at this. Oh, no, I mean, that's if true. You, if you've played Hades casually before and you've never seen a speed run, that is ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, and, so and see. Seagull greeting the greeting the friendly shade there too. Go ahead, go ahead, Lat. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're gonna see everyone come into uh, the River Styx, and uh, just like we have with the Infinite DDs, we also have changed the game. You may know that what we're looking for in Styx is the Seder Sack to feed to our favorite pet Cerberus to move on to the final boss of the game. That sack can usually be found anywhere between the second and the fifth door. In order to make races fair, we just put it behind the second door every single time. And so we can see that these these players are going to go through any two paths, basically any two paths that they want to pick up that Seder sack and move on to the final boss. Yeah, and while <clears throat> while both of these runners make their way to the end of six, if we have a few more donations. Now's a good time. Yeah, absolutely. So we have $50 from Kalobi who says, the Hades speedrunning community is one of the most welcoming communities I've been a part of. And I'm glad that Siegel and Tonus get to showcase this amazing game on the big stage. I'll be donating another $2 per barge and Tony and $10 per death. So don't die on EM4 guys. <laughs> Thanks so much, Kalobi. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess we should explain Tony. <laughs> <laughs> but first, we should watch this Hades fight. Absolutely, because we can see Tone has actually picked up epic rush delivery right before the end of this. So, oh wow, <laughs> he has so much damage right now. <laughs> so that's 455 Doom Crocs. Oh man, Hades is just absolutely melting away. Seagull's not far behind here, just entering the Hades fight now. Tone is still in phase one. Pet count at. As, as we're moving into the first potential opportunity to pet the dog. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm doing some quick math here, <laughs> and I believe we're at 12 pets. Oh, boy. Yep. Wow. $36,000 so out of $90,000. You're all incredible. Yep. That's that's amazing. That's a, so good. We can probably space this out a little bit, right? No. We don't need to do 10, 10. Pet that just dog. Now. Pet that dog. Pet that dog. That's what I saw. I'm a glad on this one. Sorry, Seagull. Okay, we'll so break 12? all at once then. What's 12? 12. 12. 12. <laughs> 12 pets. All 12. Wow. 12 pets. And then, uh, oh, and a bonus fish here for Tonus, too. Uh, I do know we have a few members of the community that are donating for every fish these racers fish up. And so uh, here's number one. If you would like to join in on that, you know, it doesn't have to be a lot. Maybe $1 for every fish, $5 for every fish, whatever you feel comfortable doing. Uh, you know, really show some love for these these racers. Mm -hmm. And so here comes Tonus. We're gonna see it there, Cerberus. Twelve pets. Count them out. <laughs> and while they do that, we have time for some more donations. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, we have $25 from Pancake, who says, one year ago, I joined the Hades speedrun community. It's been incredible getting to meet so many talented runners, and I couldn't be happier to call you all my friends. Good luck, Seagull and Tonus. Hopefully it is not rats o'clock. <laughs> Thanks, Pancake. Oh no, he's not here. Oh, uh, no. I'll have to, I'll have to so get him on the next one. gonna have a bank. Yeah. Also make him, up, <laughs> make him up on the next run. Sometimes he's just doing his own thing, you know? You like it when you get pets like this, don't you? Know? Strong, independent dog. He's a hard-working dog. Absolutely. All right, so here comes the aspect of Achilles Lat, if you want to do a quick intro on this weapon. Yeah, absolutely. So Achilles is, honestly, it's probably one of the best feeling weapons in the entire game. And what you end up doing, the, the gimmick on this weapon, is you can throw that spear anywhere you want, and usually you would have to call it back to yourself. But instead, when you play the Aspect of Achilles, you get to launch yourself across the arena to wherever you threw your spear to. So the movement on, on Achilles, it just feels incredible. You're dashing everywhere, you're spear tossing everywhere, and like Supergiant has done heads, huh? just such an incredible job of making this aspect feel so good to play. They've they've played around with the buffering and everything and the way that it works is uh, it's it's probably my well it's my second favorite weapon because <laughs> it is so good. But I also want to do a quick second. shout out. 
Before I forget, I believe, and I, I might be wrong about this, but I hope I'm not. I believe that 185 is doing um, the Japanese race stream commentary. Yes. And 185 is an absolutely incredible Achilles runner. You must watch their runs. They're insane. Um, so a quick, huge shout out to 185, who is one of the best players in Hades and is currently live on the Japanese restream. You'll, uh, you, you'll have noticed that Tonus right there just checked uh, a little menu there before heading out. That was the Mirror of Night. That's our meta progression uh, system. There's a few different um, upgrades. Uh, there's, there's, I don't know how many upgrades there are, but there's, there's a number of them, and they're all toggleable. They're, they're two-sided, so you can pick between two different upgrades in each slot, essentially. Uh, and so you'll see the runners return to that Mirror of Night to, to swap. Um, you know, to whatever their preferred meta reward upgrades are. Chaos has evolved. Meg, help. And here comes the Doomstone. And there goes the Doomstone, so that was a fight. And on, on Tonus' side, I can see that the uh, the rune that he just picked up, yeah, was the, the hammer, the Daedalus hammer. And so normally you might see that uh, there's usually three options for rewards. When we're racing, we allow the players to choose exactly which hammer they want. And when you're playing Achilles, uh, you're always going to see these racers take Flurry Jab as their first hammer. Do you want to uh, tell us a little bit about why, Vareen? Uh, sure. So there's... <laughs> So the first reason is that a lot of the hammers for the spear are not very good. They do not make you go fast. Flurry jab makes you go fast. It's like three times attack speed. You just you can just hold the button down if you want. Uh, it's it, it's just so much damage. It's completely ridiculous. Uh, it's amazing that we didn't uh, find out that this was the case sooner and get this thing nerfed before the game was released. But here we are. It's live, and uh, and they're gonna absolutely shred the game with it. And uh, I guess while we while we go through the rest of Tarvis here, we can probably do a couple more donations. For sure. So uh, sorry about this one, but this is from Hades. It's three hundred dollars, oh, no. and Hades says, "Cerberus, are they bothering you again?" <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks, Hades. Um, man, that that's that that's a good. Uh, yeah. Segway into talking about Logan Cunningham's voice acting in this game. Oh my. The voice acting in this game is so good. I know. It's it's a shame that we uh we usually skip through all of it on, on these <laughs> yeah. runs. <laughs> but the moments that you do get to hear it, absolutely incredible. My favorite thing about the uh, the voice acting in Hades is uh, specifically some of Zagreus' lines, uh, where he gives little comments on every enemy in every room. Not always, but as you play enough, you will learn every single enemy's name without ever opening the, the codex, which is like the encyclopedia. You just learn every enemy's name just from Zag kind of commenting on them offhandedly. And it's, it's, it's so like natural and uh, organic, and it's just such a great way to communicate information to the player, I think, that, that I've learned all this stuff without even trying. A few, uh, few hundred hours in the game also helps yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, I, st I still don't know what the pink there. crystals that shoot the lasers at you are called. I just call them reset lasers. <laughs> That's a you problem, Lat. <laughs> is that a fisheye spot in the lava? It is. And so we can so, see... Uh, yeah. So yeah, oh, I guess no. we should talk a little bit about the build that they're going for here on Achilles. Um, I'll save you from the magma. I, the Seagull has a really great setup right now, if you want to talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the... Uh, oh, I just got to... Oh, I messed up. Ooh. I was so stupid. I was so distracted by thinking about the build. Uh, so Achilles is, with the flurry jab, as you were talking about, a very, very strong weapon. Going quickly at moving across rooms quickly with this uh, basically teleporting ability, the, the raging rush. Uh, but one thing, where, one place where it's a little weaker is in uh, boss fights. It just doesn't have a ton of damage on its own. Uh, but one thing you get with that special rush is you also get a huge bonus to your attack and uh, cast damage for your next four attacks or casts after. So if you get a very strong cast, then uh, it can pretty much solve your your issues with uh, 
with, with, with boss damage. And one, probably the most popular one right now, is the one I picked up, the Ares cast, which is called Slicing Shot. You see, it's pretty these big uh, blade rips, as they're called out. Uh, they do, they're, they're not that good in on other weapons, but on Achilles, they just turn into these little wheels of death. And when combined with Artemis Boons, oh, that's the wrong one. I'm um, searching for the duo boon between Artemis and Ares, which is called Hunting Blades, which turn those wheels of, of death into homing wheels of death, which uh, will circle around and seek out the bosses and enemies. And it just becomes unbelievably powerful in boss fights. I hope they'll be able to get that combination. Antonis, what are what are you looking for right now? Because you've got something a little different going on. You, you it's it's fairly similar, but you have um, you have Zeus on special there, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, I just kind of slapped it there. I'm probably going for the slicing shot anyway. Oh, the hunting blades. Gotcha, gotcha. Really nice four witch Meg there, by the way. You'll notice these runners use the Meg companion keepsake a lot. Um, that's it's the speedrunning staple uh, for the companion keepsakes. It's basically always Meg, and the reason for that is it does the damage in a pretty large line. It does 2,500 damage, which is usually enough to break any armor or shield threshold um, on a on a boss. And uh, and it comes out way way faster than something like Mort does, uh, where. Uh, Thanatos' companion keeps like Mort does 3,500 damage, I think, but it, it comes out much, much slower. It takes several seconds for it to come out. So ultimately, because we don't need the extra damage from it, the extra thousand doesn't really hit us any breakpoints. Uh, it's usually better to just go for this Meg keepsake, which has some really cool tech for how to line it up. Um, and, and these runners are great at it, so you're going to just see nothing but impeccable Megs, I'm sure, for this entire race. Well, don't jinx us now. We might see the return of the legendary one witch Meg. <laughs> that uh, that is always a risk, but I'm sure you two will do just fine. All right, so Seagull is heading into Elysium here. Tonus is fighting Lerny the Lernaean Bone Hydra, but remember, Tonus has already pet the dog twelve times. So Seagull, go! <laughs> fly, Seagull, fly! That's probably a good time for a few donations as Tonus finishes up. Absolutely. So also just to catch you up, we are at 14 pets now. <laughs> but I'll read some more donations for you all. We have $25 from Museus who says, Good luck, Siegel and Tonus. It's been great seeing you both grow from struggling to get a sub-10 IGT <laughs> to going head-to-head -head at GDQ. Also, let's go first run, Couch. Hey, <laughs> this they're a, a long-standing member of the community, just a, an absolutely phenomenal person. We uh, we, we love Museus here, and uh, oh, yeah. we may be biased because me and Vlad here both run a category called Fresh File, which uh, starts on a new save, and uh, Museus also is a, a, a fan huge of that innovator category. in the category. <laughs> yeah, Museus also the uh, the coder of uh, the Infinite DD mod that we use in uh, in this race. Seagull getting another fish here. Will we catch this one? What do we get? Do we get Sea Mayor? Charp! Char Char I hope you're enjoying the fish tech with Achilles that I'm doing where I throw the spear towards the door ahead of time, so as soon as I catch the fish, I can warp myself there. Amazing. Next level speed strats from Seagull. Fish, fish later. speed tech, yeah. Let's work on that for a while. Speaking of speed tech, Tonus there uh, launching the spear toward the Chaos Gate before checking the exit doors. And unfortunately, along with the Chaos Gate, also got offered Patroclus and the shop. You you generally don't want to see multiple free rooms offered next to each other because that means you won't run into them later. And uh, so Tonus getting a little bit unlucky there. An embarrassment of riches. It's an embarrassment of riches, but also you, you have to be able to identify which of those three is the best for you. Because it's not, they're not all equal, right? So in this case, you know, Tonus has to decide, okay, well, is the potential to get something extremely powerful from Chaos worth actually turning around and going all the way back down to the bottom of the screen? Is there something in the shop that you need for the build? Or is uh, well, probably the attack damage, or maybe even uh, some extra death defiances from Patroclus the best. 
And uh, the fact that you can run through all of that in, you know, the half a second of uh, looking through things is absolutely incredible. Yeah, the pace that these runners are processing the information, the boons being presented to them, the enemy layouts, get, you know, optimizing their path to all the enemies in order to stack them on top of each other and DPS them down. It's, it's just, it's always such a treat. I, I just love watching Hades speedruns. Oh yeah. Well, watching anyone fight these uh, these shielded enemies, you know, watch, watching how people are able to get themselves behind the great shields and continue DPSing them is, is so much fun to watch. Yeah, at, at this point, it, it, it probably makes sense to mention that this is a game that doesn't have a ton of what you would traditionally think of as speed tech, and that there's not that many like glitches or tricks. Uh, it's it's really just boils down to getting really really good at playing Hades the video game. It's it's that simple. You just you just gotta know what to do. You gotta know what boons you want to grab. Um, you know it's it's a frenetic pace. You're just you're constantly going and. Uh, it, the the really nice thing about it is it's it's a super accessible speed game. Um, super Giant were were awesome enough to put an in-game timer in this in this game. So uh, and it's prominently to put, uh, displayed on the victory screen. So uh, you kind of you see what your personal best time is and you want to beat it right away um, before you even if you have never heard of speedrunning before. You're kind of already trying to like beat that best time. And, uh, I know a ton of runners got into speedrunning from Hades, because of Hades, and I'm so grateful to Super Giant for that. I think oh, the yeah. three of us beside you and Reem all this is our first mm -hmm. our first uh, speed game, both Matt, Thomas, and I. Would this be a good time for some donations? Please, absolutely. Awesome. absolutely. So we have $50 from Zeruvius, who says, Good luck, Tonus and Seagull. Don't forget to fish, give Boldy Nectar, and greet that shade, along with pet that dog. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Zeruvius. Both runners heading into Styx Tunnels now. They're, they're really hoping not to get these tiny rats, and especially the tiniest rat of all, the tiny vermin, uh, which... <laughs> Uh, a bit of a throwback to earlier, that's what we call Tony in the community, thanks to a typo by our very own seagull here. Uh, Tiny Vermin is officially Tony in the Hades speedrunning community, and uh, the giant vermin mini boss is Anthony, Tony's older brother, of course. Why Tony's parents named both of their kids Tony is yeah, beyond right. us, but... <laughs> it's just a weird choice, weird choice. <laughs> They're rats, what can we expect? Making, yeah, Seagull making short work of uh, that Doomstone. Is it a Doomstone? I don't even know snake what that is. Snake See, the, I told you, the, the, it's shaped the, like a snake. the shiny pink laser, you know, the, all the shooty <laughs> things. I, I have no idea what they're called. A snake stone. It's a snake, and it's made of stone. That makes sense. You should listen to, listen to Zach. He knows, he knows all the names. Meanwhile, Tonus dealing with the big bother, which is uh, actually the fastest mini boss that you can get, uh, just outside of the, just slightly faster than the, the Great Seder that you will see sometimes. Huge three-headed hound. Unfortunately, you cannot pet Cerberus uh, when he's here in the Temple of Sticks doing his job. You can only do it when you're at home. I can go. Yeah, but you can get that fish. Seagull definitely winning on the fish right now. That's for sure. Look, if I, can, if I can't win the race, then I might as well at least catch the most fish, right? <laughs> and a scuffer there is a is a great catch. Uh, I I love the art for the scuffer. It's it's probably my absolute favorite in the game. So, T Tonus, have you picked up every single duo boon that uh, you can possibly was, have right now? Is that where they I are? think so. I don't have it. I don't have any. <laughs> Hunting blaze rot. Second wave. <laughs> I didn't even notice the second wave pickup. I saw it show up. I, I didn't notice you picked it. Of course, it's orange. True. Uh, so what second wave does, for anyone who's curious, it's the Poseidon legendary boon. It uh, it causes knockback effects to get doubled. Um, so, so your boons that, that cause knockback effects cause an additional knockback. And uh, usually it just like doesn't do anything good. It makes things harder rather than easier. It, uh, you basically only take it to either flex or try to sell it later, because uh, legendary and heroic boons sell for, and duo boons sell for extra money at the uh, the purging pool 
which you can find in the, uh, the mid-biome chambers. And there is an achievement for selling that legendary bone as well. So, you know, all the achievement hunting that our, that our runners are trying to do today, I'm sure. <laughs> Absolutely. And so here we can see the, the power. Both both of these racers have hunting blades. And uh, I didn't see blades, how but... yeah. you don't you, you you didn't find it? No, well, they weren't hunting. Ooh, they were Thomas took all the green boots. Tonus is down to the penalty well, box, TD. Has to be careful here. Got you. Okay. On to the second health bar of phase By two here. A good Hades call. This Hades call makes Tonus not be able to take damage for five seconds, and that is just enough to get through that fight. Whew. Seagull, 120 health. How many pets do we need? Uh, so we good. are at 14 right now. Oh boy, so two more for Tonus. Uh, 14. Oh, for me. For you. Oh, oh, let's give him This is going to set me back a little bit. Pet that dog. Pet and while we're that petting that dog. dog Feel free to read some donations. Absolutely. All right. We have $50 from Elo Mina, who says, sorry if I watched that. I can't Elo Meta P, but. Oh, Elo Meta P. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's clever. I can't stress enough how wonderful and welcoming the Hades speedrun community is. Thanks for being a bright spot for so many these past few years. Much love to Lad, Four, Seagull, and Tonus. And pet that dog. Oh, kind of built oh. Elemento P actually built a lot of the uh, the base of the the, the speeder on mod pack that we all use today. Uh, we we owe a lot to, to Elemento P's contributions to the community. Um, mm -hmm. he's a, just a wonderful, wonderful person and uh, a great contributor. You can read a few more donations if you'd like. For sure. So we have one hundred dollars from Rogue Mike, who says Hades is one of the greatest boy. games I've ever played, and I just had to donate. So much thanks to Supergiant for their fantastic game library and the runners for showcasing them. Stay cute, chat, and let's get these gods to help smite cancer. Thank you so much. Seagull, also, how are we doing? I think yeah, this Seagull is nine maybe coming up. If anyone wants to take so a break, that's that's cool. I've been, I think I've been counting. I think this is nine. You're also really close to hitting 15. I will let you know. Um, but you might have to hit 15. OK, I'll keep that in mind. All right, uh, and uh, while Seagull pets that dog, we can explain what Tonus is doing. So Tonus took the sword as the, uh, well, the third weapon here. here. This is the nemesis aspect of the sword. It grants you a bonus to your critical strike chance on your attack after you use your special for a couple seconds. Um, and uh, do you want to explain sword gameplay, Lat? Yeah, absolutely. So with their... What you want to be doing on the sword, like honestly with all the weapons in Hades, no. but especially on the sword, 14. you really are going to be focusing on the dash strikes. And so what a dash strike actually is in Hades is inputting an attack into dash at the same exact time, or you can dash first and then attack later. Let's Extended dash it. strikes, these exist. It doesn't really matter. So you're trying to dash strike everywhere. And the reason on the sword that you want to dash strike is because the standing attack or the neutral attack is just incredibly slow and actually just has lower base damage than, uh, than a dash strike does. So the combo of attack that you want to see or that you're going to see a lot from the, from the Nemesis aspect is uh, the runners will open with a special to get their critical uh, chance buff and then do two dash strikes is generally speaking what you're going to be seeing. And so yeah, yeah here we can see. You'll, you'll also see a lot of usage of, the, of this cast. The sword does not have a lot of range and uh, that's, that's really its biggest weakness. You, you really have to just have accurate dash strikes through all the enemies in a room. And if, if something spawns really far away, your best bet is to chuck that cast across the room and, and try and snipe it. So as these runners are doing these dash strikes frantically, trying to kill all the enemies, if there's something that spawns really far away, uh, you'll probably see a red projectile fly out of them to the side and snipe something across the screen while it looks like their attention is somewhere else. They're, they're paying very close attention to where these enemies are in these rooms and they're not gonna miss anything. Which is, uh, brings up another important point about the cast in the game is, uh, we mentioned earlier, the, uh, the Mirror of Night and how that has a lot of meta upgrade rewards. One of those rewards is, it's called Boiling Blood, and any time you cast at an enemy and your cast stone gets stuck in them, you actually deal an extra 50% attack damage. And so you're going to see 
on weapons like this that really heavily rely on getting critical hits, that extra 50% damage before the crit even happens is pretty important, especially in these boss fights. Now it doesn't stack, so you can see if you if you look at well, I like to die a little bit too quickly to uh, to show <laughs> it off. wasn't so good. We could have. You would have been able shot. to see. <laughs> we'll try to we'll try to point it out a little bit more when when Seagull ends up catching up. So, yeah. and, um, Tonus, so you, you have an like... interesting build here. Yeah. I, I see Dionysus special, which is a. Uh, not generally what we see in the meta. Yeah, so what's, I just like to like, start with the shackle, just give us really 100% extra damage until I get like a boon on any of the slots. So I just like to take that and then just slap anything I can find. And this time it just ended up being this weird, like, basically kind of traditional crit build, I guess, with Artemis. Even, even Forest Hunter's mark here to get most out of my crits because I think Nemesis is the most fun that they like like the base mechanics are so fun that you don't really need to get all the all the flat damage boons that we are probably going to see Seagull go for. I don't know. <laughs> yeah I, I do see it inside. Yeah. <laughs> inside. And so yeah, what, what that means when when Tonus was talking about the uh, you know flat damage boons. Well, that is the opposite of uh, essentially percent damage boons. So you have these you have these things like a uh, tidal dash beside the dash from Poseidon that just deals a flat damage amount. You know, say like seventy damage. There's not a modifier on top of that or anything. Whereas the attack that you get from Artemis, it just takes your base attack damage times forty eight percent. And so those are the two different types of damage. You know, we have additive damage and then we have flat damage, is generally speaking how these builds come together. So I'm sorry, I'm just entranced here. Uh, <laughs> by the, the speed that they're killing these bosses. Um, yeah, so you'll, you'll have flat damage and percentage damage. Um, generally speaking, it's a lot easier to find sources of percentage damage. Um, you know, you'll get percentage damage from chaos, you'll get percentage damage from boons. Uh, you'll get percentage damage from, from Wells of Charon occasionally, it'll give you jerky or something. Um, flat damage only scales off global damage um, for the most part, so, you know, your boons like your Tidal Dash or your um, or your Revenge boons, those are not going to get extra damage unless you get something like the Rush Delivery boon that Lat was talking about earlier, or something like your Mirror Bonus of High Confidence, which, uh, when you have high health, gives you 25% more damage. Um, uh, those kinds of things. And and generally in this game, damage is additive, not multiplicative. So uh, what, what that essentially means is that the more you get of a, a certain damage bonus, it becomes l like less and less relatively impactful. Um, so if you get, you know, 100% damage, attack damage here and 100% attack damage here, that just ends up being 200% of the base. Which is why, and as I said, all of that they both <laughs> blew through Asphodel. <laughs> they sure did. <laughs> but that's exactly why you want to pair those additive damage along with the crit build. Which is why Nemesis is such a powerful crit build. Is because one, you have anytime you special, you get a thirty percent crit chance in this game, which is for this game extremely high, just out of, out of the gate. Nothing does thirty percent. Once you get that Artemis attack, it gives you an extra 15% crit chance. So when every single attack that you have has a 45% chance to crit, and crits in this game are, what are they, they're, are they just three times damage? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're three they're, times? They're, yep. It's so much, it's so much. Yeah. And you, you saw that happen with Lerny, where Lerny just kind of popped. <laughs> yeah, and to talk quickly about how we make these crits even more consistent with Nemesis, this Hunter's Mark boon that Tonus was talking about earlier, both both racers have it right now. Uh, you'll notice on some enemies this, this green target on top of them. Um, that means uh, they've been debuffed by Hunter's Mark. What Hunter's Mark does is when you crit an enemy, a nearby enemy gets that mark on them, and any hit against them will have bonus crit chance. Um, so one of the like high-skill aspects of playing Nemesis is dash striking through an enemy to put the Hunter's Mark proc somewhere, 
dash striking to that enemy to proc Hunter's Mark and to chain those Hunter's Marks and chase them around the screen until all the enemies die. Mm -hmm. It's so much fun. It's Running so, so much fun. 70 to 80% crit chances. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really a good time. You'll see it especially come in handy during the heroes fight when you just have two enemies with relatively large health totals standing right next to each other. You just trade that uh, that hunter's mark back and forth between the two of them over and over and over again. Another thing well, that uh, the hunter's mark is really nice for is that it applies to global crit chance. It's not just on the, for example, Nemesis can only normally crit on the attack. But if you have a high damage dash boon, like I have title dash, or if you have a call boon or a cast boon, uh, the crit chance applies to all of those. You basically have this big crit chance on your attack that you can use to set up mark, which can apply to any of your big damage. Right. Right, because your normal crit chance is basically just on your attack, but once you get Hunter's Mark, that becomes global. Yeah, because like anything, the, anything can crit. Because like the, the Artemis attack boons, they have some of the lowest percent adding in the game just because of how um, strong a critical hit chance is. Uh, but if you can apply a critical hit chance to something that wasn't balanced around that, like the dash or a call or something, then it's, it's, uh, it's even more powerful. And uh, I guess if we want to throw over some donations real quick before we, uh, we get to watch these heroes fights. Absolutely. So we have a really fun donation, uh, $250 from Seagull of the Past, which says, <laughs> hello, Seagull. This is Past Seagull. How are you? I am fine. I hope the race is going well and you're getting all of the boons that you want. I am very proud of you and all of the cool Hades things you are doing. If you are winning, good job. I always believed in you. If you are behind, don't worry. It's only a game. Love, past Seagull. <laughs> oh, that's very sweet of them. <laughs> what a, sounds like a nice guy. Yeah, I'd like to look at him someday. Conus is now entering the heroes fight. We're probably going to see these heroes disappear in record time, so don't blink. There is Megara. So we can see that perfect Meg setup. All you have to do is push the up button for just a moment, and then you hit your summon, and it hits both of them 100% of the time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Meanwhile, Ponus doing the same thing to the mini boss version of Asterius here. A little less good since you can't proc Hunter's Mark, but damage will actually be even higher in the hero side, if you can believe that. And uh, did we touch on the hammer that's used on Aspect of Nemesis? We had not. We had not. So, um, lost among all of this discussion of multiplicative damage and crits and all of that, is the main hammer that we, we get with uh, the aspect of Nemesis that we basically search for on, and on most swords is double edge, which doubles your dash strike. Okay. You get two of them. It just does two. <laughs> it used and to it do throws one a little bit of extra nice. damage on top, just just for <laughs> just why not? <laughs> so yeah, so for all of for all of this talk about you know trying to maximize our crit chance and and doing all of this extra damage by stacking you know additive damage on top of each other, yeah, we also get to. Every single time any of that damage crits, it's just going to happen twice because of Double Edge. Conus doing double a really edge. nice job killing that big bother there before any mm -hmm. uh, additional enemies can spawn in. That's one of the things you want to be most careful about in sticks. You really want to make sure you kill those mini bosses quickly because they will spawn in adds and they take, they just cost a lot of time. Also, just as an update, we are at 16 pets now. Wow. <laughs> Let's go. 16 out of a possible 30, so keep pushing for more pets, everyone. See how many pets we can make these runners do? Tone is collecting the third sack and getting epic rush delivery. Oh, wow. boy. Seagull's wrapping up the last combat chamber of Elysium here. Honus entering the Hades fight. Um, they're both going to have some pets to do <laughs> when they get out of this run. Uh, I must. Yeah, I just, I just love this game. Oh yeah, <laughs> so much fun. It'd be nice to see oh, both of these players get these boss fights at the same time. <laughs> 
Yeah. So Watch this hero fight especially. I'm phasing both of them simultaneously, which is a skill actually. It is uh, it is something that you want to do. Usually, you'll end up in these situations where you might uh, you might phase one enemy slightly before the other, and they can kind of get stuck in their bubble for a while. So uh, Siegel doing a, a fantastic job of actually taking down both Theseus and Asterius at exactly the same time. One thing that kind of helped with that is uh, the fact that I saw when you see Asterius as the mini boss in Elysium, he starts the mm -hmm. boss fight with 25% less health, and he already has way more health than Theseus, so it helps space at the same time. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. seeing Asterius as a mini boss is much slower than the alternative, so it's more of a like the game throwing you a bone than a uh, than a real strat anyway. <laughs> In in the uh, in the IGT versions, the the in-game time versions, it, it ends up to be fairly equal. But yeah, when you're looking at real time, and we actually have to uh, account for all of the cutscene timing, yeah, you generally don't want to see Asterius as your mini boss in Elysium. Yes, Tonus gets these pets out of the way. Dog, pet that dog, pet that dog. We're about to head into the second half of the run, and you know what that means. You all donated for it, so we're going to get to watch it. These runners are going uh, to do these last three runs with Extreme Measures 4. This pact increases the difficulty of the Heroes boss fight and the Hades boss fight. Um, it, it introduces some, some real wacky stuff to the Heroes, so I'm so excited to get there. And, uh, and the Hades fight is also a, just a real treat and extremely dangerous. Both these runners are uh, understandably a little bit nervous going in. They've practiced plenty. I'm sure they'll be fine. And so here, yeah, we we get to Eris, which is uh, the aspect of the rail. You, you know, the classic uh, Greek weapon, a regular gun. Um, and so the gimmick on this weapon is that any time you stand inside of the blast radius of your special, you get a 75% global damage buff, which is, uh, it's completely unheard of in this game. It doesn't, it, it almost doesn't fit with the rest of the, uh, the types of buffs that you get. And so for a very long time, this was thought to be the meta fastest weapon. And it's still many people's first weapon that they learned to speed run the game with because of that damage buff. And you, you just feel very powerful when, when you take advantage of that. And so what you're gonna see here is that this is the build where you want to stack as much flat damage as possible, which is why you can see uh, Tonus here has taken Zeus attack and Poseidon's dash. Those are both flat damage wounds and they are gonna get buffed by that 75% global damage. Seagull wrapping up the uh, the Nemesis Sword run here, not too far behind. This is definitely still recoverable. Um, I I am so excited to watch the CM4 though. <laughs> I just can't wait. Would now be a good time for some donations. Absolutely. Awesome. So we have $10 from Krovin who says, good luck to Siegel and Tonus and thanks for couching, Latin Vareem. Been a great year since I met this community and kept playing with all y'all. Don't die to EM4, please, and pet that dog. Yep, Siegel is about to go have to pet that dog right now. What do we have now? I think we have I two more. I believe 16. we're at 16. Okay, yes, we're at then. 16. Uh, wait, 17. We just crossed 17, I think. <laughs> Three more for me, then. <laughs> so I also have one in the bank. Yep, 17. There you go. Such a good boy. So there's a, number a of, uh, there's a number of cosmetics you can purchase uh, for the House of Hades. Like, it's, uh, my house here looks much less drab than it does at the beginning of the game. Uh, this includes the bowl of bones, the comfy plush bed, and the uh, teddy bear that Cerberus has to play with. Right here next to next to Hades' desk. You have a couple options. You can give him like a ball, you can give him a different color bed. A lot of uh, a lot of fun dog furnishings you can, you can pick up. 
and uh, and while Seagull goes and gets ready to do that EM4 rail run, we can watch Tonus do this this Furious fight and talk a little bit about the hammers that we want to see on the rail. Lat, do you want to go over the hammers? Absolutely. So it, it looks like we were able to make it all the way through Tartarus on, on Tonus's run without finding our first hammer because the first hammer that we want to see is going to be called Rocket Bomb. Uh, the reason that we choose Rocket Bomb is because it gives you a big increase to the base damage of the special, which pairs really nicely with uh, any, you know, large uh, attack damage or, or say, like, Artemis attack or something along those lines, it looks like. You know, uh, Tonus here has Epic Special from Demeter, which has pretty good, you know, pretty good attack damage there. And so you want to get that Rocket Bomb first because... When you play on controller, which uh, most, of the, which both of these players do, it pairs really nicely with the auto aim, <laughs> and uh, of course you get that base <laughs> damage increase. But the second hammer, the the one that our players do not get to plan for, they are hoping that it's going to be cluster bombs. And what cluster bombs is, is it gives you five bombs that. Uh, you know, leave in a spread. So when you pair cluster bombs with rocket bombs, you just shoot five rockets in a giant spread in front of you, and they actually use that to their advantage to uh, basically shotgun down all the enemies in the game. And uh, it's super fun to watch them play it, and it's extremely satisfying to play yourself. And, uh, and I, I so, so hope that one of these runners gets it. Absolutely. That only makes the extreme measure fights much smoother. When you have an instant so death button. We, we can see there. They're picking up epic special speed. Really, <laughs> really hoping. And so epic special speed means that the cooldown time on his specials is going to be uh, reduced. And when it's epic, it's reduced significantly. So he'll basically be able to uh, special with impunity. And so here we can see, is this the first barge of death? of the entire nah. phone? No, no. That no, I just haven't been paying attention. They, yeah, they play so fast, I have, I have not even been able to notice. Yeah, but the, this is good news. This is good news for Seagull here. Tonus getting barged while Seagull finds a, a fountain that is uh, that is about as much as you can hope for <laughs> to uh, to start catching up here on this, uh, this fourth aspect. We are on the fourth weapon of our all weapons race. Already, I know the time is flying. These runners are going so fast. I hope you're all having a wonderful time, having an incredible time at like with this GDQ marathon. Uh, I've been enjoying the runs all week. It's been awesome. Uh, and yeah, we're just, we're so stoked to bring, bring you all 80s right now. Absolutely. I would also like to point out that we have hit our 18th pet. <laughs> so Let's it go. just keeps going up. <laughs> Let's see, can can we uh, can we max that thing out? Do we think? That's 30 pets total. We're already at 18. That's yeah, over halfway. Let's do it. I don't know. Well, you know, Let's I said many we can get. when we were when they first said, it's like, oh, it's going to be 30 pets possible. I said, no way, people are going to get bored of us petting the dog. So, uh, you know, prove me wrong. <laughs> so let's see how many how many times you really want this uh, this, this good boy pet. Because, I mean, he does have three heads. So he logically, I think that means he needs three times as many pets as any other dog. That, that math checks out. Although there's some uh, dialogue in the game that, uh, or Zagreus basically says uh, that, Servers are very particular. Only one of the heads likes to be pet. The other ones will will snap at you. So you only pet. Oh yeah. Only only one head gets pets. But I assume they all the share the good feelings from them. <laughs> I certainly hope so. There's definitely a, a bitey head that you want to uh, steer clear of. <laughs> so Tonus leaving Asphodel here while uh, while Seagull enters Asphodel. So they're about a biome apart. Um, there's still plenty of time left in this race for Seagull to make it up, and this Chaos Gate will definitely help that cause. And don't forget that I'm also one dog pet ahead. True. True. The Chaos into this Eurydice room. We'll see which uh, which reward he chooses from Eurydice. Yes, and so you get three options from any of these story rooms. Uh, story rooms where you talk to one of the NPCs. With Eurydice, you can either gamble to increase the rarity of two of your boons, 
you can add a palm to four different boons, or you can take the nectar, which actually makes the next three boons that you pick up have increased rarity, or the potential to have increased rarity. And here, uh, he's already got a lot of the boons that he really wants to see for his build. So he just wants to make himself more powerful. So he wants to add to, to pick the, the pomegranates so that he can get four levels in, uh, in the boons that he already has. And oh no, here he goes onto the barge of death. Because Lat was saying earlier how the Eris Rail likes you want it because of the big base 75% damage, but if you just want to stack flat damage onto it, and by taking those palms, I eat. You know, I get an extra 75% value from them, essentially. Mm -hmm. Very worth it. Yep, and here comes our first example of what EM3 does. We have Asterius in this shining gold armor. Uh, changes the attacks up a fair bit, but uh, Tonus looks to have an incredible build and is still absolutely shredding this mini boss. So here we can see, yeah, Asterius's dreaded spin attack taking a death defiance away. I was not ready for that. But... <laughs> <laughs> so have you, you picked your second hammer yet, Tonus? No, no, just the first one. Okay. Teamwork. Cold fusion. Did we, uh, <laughs> did we talk about Jolted? <laughs> we have not talked about Jolted yet, no. Okay, because so Tonus just got cold fusion. Cold fusion. <laughs> you we should talk, talk about, Jolted. about Jolted first. <laughs> first, you have to understand Jolted. And so what Jolted is, is any time you hit an enemy with uh, with any attack that does lightning damage, um, it adds a curse to that enemy that the next time they attack, they're going to take an additional amount of damage. So basically it's the why are you hitting yourself boon. And that Jolted is basically a curse that the enemies will always have because of the amount of uh, Zeus attack that we're doing with the with the machine gun, the actual Greek machine gun that we have here. Yeah, and, and, and so, an awesome thing about this uh, the Eris Rail attack is, unlike most other weapons, when you hit something with the Eris attack, it does not hit stun the enemies, and that means that they are free to just proc that jolted on themselves as fast as you can apply it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, on, on other weapons like the Achilles Spear, you'll you'll uh, you'll interrupt their attack animations if you keep hitting them, and so you won't get as much value out of jolted as you do on a weapon like Eris. Exactly. Not to mention the fact that we're also stacking that 75% Eris buff on top of it. And there we go. The honorable Asphodel fish for Seagull. Let's see what we get. Seagull's been, uh, been keeping the fishing alive here. You'll the notice there's a, there's a blue outline around Zag. You may, might have noticed some outlines around other things on, uh, on Seagull's screen. This is a colorblind accessibility mod that, uh, that was created in order to, um, to assist runners. It is the only mod that is legal on the unmodded leaderboards um, because we figured as an accessibility option, having a colorblind option there just as a, was a, a bit of a no-brainer since it was easy enough for us to implement. Um, and. Uh, yeah, I'm really happy that we have it, and uh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that one of our runners is using it so we can showcase it. Yeah, you can activate it as you want, like in each, each biome, basically, if you feel like you want it there or not. And obviously, I do you know, prefer to keep the original visuals as much as possible because the game is gorgeous to look at. But uh, some of the stuff in Asphodel really, really starts to blend together for me. So I think that will find out for some, some help. Can I slide a quick donation so, in? Absolutely. All right, so this is really on topic because Tonus just got out of Elysium, but we just got $3,000 wow. from your favorite shade, who says, oh. pet that dog exactly one more time, please. <laughs> That's definitely <laughs> a thank you, so you from wow. Tonus. Will do. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Seagull finally getting that first hammer as well. Both of them got really late hammers in this run. It's unfortunate, but there's still a chance here for Seagull to get that rocket bomb and showcase, or, uh, that cluster rocket rather, and, uh, and and showcase the power of that. So let's all cross our fingers and, and hope and hope and hope that Seagull gets to show that for all of you. And so there, Seagull goes through the Butterfly Ball, which is the, the faster of the two options for mini bosses, especially when you have that Extreme Measures 3 on. And, uh, you know, we made quick work of it, Tonus did, but uh, we'll, we'll try to explain 
what's going on in that Extreme Measures 3 fight when uh, Seagull gets in there himself. Yeah, and uh, don't worry, we will have two more of them. We still have two more weapons left after this. We have the shield and the bow. We'll be using the Beowulf aspect of the shield and then the Hera aspect of the bow, and we will explain those when we get to them. But uh, right now, let's just let's just enjoy the combat. Notice the Elysium is, is one of the hardest things to play. If you watch Siegel's uh, screen, it's where new runners to Hades often lose the most time. Um, the enemies are just pretty difficult to track. It's hard to keep them together. Uh, it's hard to manipulate the spawns um, because the rooms are so big. Um, and Seagull gets triple bomb here. It's not cluster rocket, unfortunately, but it does mean Seagull gets to shoot three rockets. And uh, I mean, that's pretty cool too. And so Seagull, uh, I think, was actually explaining to me the other day. So when you have triple bomb, sometimes the way that your attack or your special works is a little bit awkward because the natural cooldown for your special doesn't actually kick off until you shoot that third triple rocket. So your natural rhythm for playing Eris kind of gets interrupted when you pick triple rocket. Um, nice night, no. How did you solve that for yourself, Siegel? Uh, so the reason that it does it is uh, like triple bomb for me has always felt very comfortable when it doesn't have the rocket and then it feels awkward with the rocket and the reason i think is because uh, the rocket even when it's just one rocket has slightly more startup flag than um than the uh the, 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 the regular bomb and so when you are shooting three of them you can shoot more of them off in quick succession uh, and so having to stutter three of the rockets out is, is much more inconvenient. And so I basically move the special bind to a button where I can just kind of keep clicking it and don't have to worry about, uh, We're seeing we, both we can extreme hear measures fights at the same time right now. I just want to point that out. We've got the extreme measures four Hades fight going on on Tonus's stream on Seagulls. We've got the the extreme measures three Theseus and Minotaur fight. The chariots going around, just gatling gunning in circles around the arena while Asterius just spins in circles. It's totally hectic and will absolutely murder you while well, you're playing this game casually. Uh, Seagull takes care of it, no problem. And then here we have EM4 Hades. Right now you can see Hades is kind of channeling and, and these pots are kind of getting like green beams on them. That's Hades healing. Uh, Hades actually gets to heal off these pots. <laughs> uh, here comes the Cerberus okay. call. These runners are actually hoping to skip that Cerberus call by doing enough damage. Tonus did not get it here, uh, but it's one of the, the cute little things that you can do in this EM4 Hades fight. Um, Seagull. What the? <laughs> what are you? Uh, what are you hoping to find here in sticks to maybe give you a bit of an edge here on this EM4 Hades fight? Oh well, unfortunately, just towards the end of that Extreme Measures three fight against the Heroes, I did lose a Death Defiance, and I'd like to not lose all of my Death Defiances if possible against Hades. Uh, so I'd like to buff up my my health a little bit. I might go for that Zeus Boon next uh, to maybe pick up the Zeus Call for some additional damage. Uh, I was able to pick up a Thun Boon called Exclusive Access earlier, which is uh, a, a duo boon between Poseidon and uh, Dionysus. And once you get it, every boon you pick up is going to be the highest rarity that a boon can be on pickup, which is epic. And uh, so this lets me just get really good boons. And so I just want to pick up as many as possible here to help my survival. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, how many pets are we at? Because Tonus is about to go back to the house. Yeah, all right, one second. So we are at 18 pets. 18 pets? 18 That's pets, yep. Six more. I got one. It's getting another surface fish here. A nice little bass. Although you'll notice sometimes there's that perfect catch text. That means that they hit, there's a certain timing window. I think it's it's 0.35 seconds, so it's not too yeah. bad. Uh, that's mo within most people's reaction time. Um, you get that perfect catch, and that increases the rarity of the fish you catch. And uh, I think what we want to do is just take a little bit of time. Um, we can read a couple donations, and when we get into the, the next phase of Hades, we really want to listen to that soundtrack, because it's so good. For sure. So we have $250 from Penguin Farm, who says, pet that dog. Hades has made the pandemic so much more tolerable, and Cerberus, the best video game dog ever, deserves all the pets, at least the head who won't bite you. 
Thank you so much, Penguin. We can do uh, probably two more. Sure. We have $100 from Uno who says, the Hades community is one of the best group of people I've been a part of, and I'm so glad that they're able to be here at JDQ raising money for a great cause. Thank you so much, Uno. All right, and we have $25 from Mads Brutal, who says, Hades has been the most welcoming and supportive community I've ever been a part of, and I'm so pumped to see it at GDQ again. Good luck, Siegel and Tonis. Get the boons and rooms. Yep, and, uh, and you all. Mads is speaking of Mads, yeah. Yeah, it's, we should absolutely plug Mads. So, uh, so Frost Fatales is coming up. It's another wonderful marathon uh, that is hosted by GDQ. And uh, Arc Elena will be doing a three weapons Hades run there um, with Mads on commentary. Absolutely. Be very excited for that. And so here we can see Seagull moving into that final phase. Best music in the game. Take me death defiance. Oh, sorry, I'm getting short through. there. <laughs> yeah, you kind of shredded there. <laughs> <laughs> and so you might you might have noticed when you're when you're looking at that extreme measures four fight that the Hades move set certainly looks a little bit different, but also the adds that he can spawn in those first couple of phases are just actual mini bosses from earlier on in the game. So usually Hades spawns, you know, regular enemies from throughout the uh, the underworld, but here he just gets the Doomstone from Tartarus, the Sneak from Tartarus, oh, the giant down. butterfly balls. Oh, no, no dog pets this time. All right, Seagull has to bank those pets for later. Um, and the shield, I believe. Yes, you are running mm -hmm. Beowulf. And uh, speaking of Beowulf, let's, uh, let's get into Beowulf a little bit. Yeah, so Beowulf is the aspect of the shield, and uh, what you end up doing is, uh, this is the first of two cast specs, or cast aspects, if you will. And uh, when you play these cast aspects, what you're actually doing is normally when you cast you would just send your cast flying across the screen. With these weapons, with Beowulf and with Hera, you'll see you load your cast into your attack. And then once you finish that attack, the attack, you know, the, the cast comes out in a giant flare at the end. And so speaking of flares, the cast that people are looking for is a flood flare, which is Poseidon's cast. And uh, the reason why is because Flood Flare is half of the requirements for Mirage Shot, which gives you two casts, where the second cast usually does 30% of the original base cast damage. But uh, on Beowulf, due to uh, some maybe layering, I'm not entirely sure exactly what it is, when you have Mirage Shot on Beowulf, that second cast just does full 100% damage. So when you get Mirage Shot on Beowulf, you have literally doubled your damage. And uh, that's why we take Poseidon Cast first, and our players are going to be looking for Artemis, which is the other requirement to get Mirage Shot as quickly as possible. Yeah, and if you've played casual Hades before, you, you probably understand at least a little bit, if you've experimented with some cast builds, the power of getting those extra cast stones. And if you get Mirage Shot on Beowulf, it's kind of like getting three extra free cast stones. <laughs> that also, like, the, the extra cast stones you get from then on also scale double. So if you have four cast stones, it's like having eight. Um, except they're all, you know, it's it's tightly packed. It's just a it's mm -hmm. a nuclear explosion. It's an insane amount of damage. It's utterly ridiculous, and it's one of the most fun things to do in Hades. Um, the other thing that you want to do on Beowulf is the hammer. You want to find Charged Shot. Uh, what Charged Shot lets you do is uh, it has 80 base damage, so when you charge up, you'll notice Tonus is doing this a lot, just charging up that attack, releasing it, It'll fly across the screen on its own and deal damage far away. So this lets you kind of pinpoint, locate your, your cast across the room and get the most optimal AOE spread so that you can take out as many enemies as, po as possible at once. 
Um, the other thing it does, it does 80 base damage, which is a lot of base damage. Um, attacks in this game just don't do that much damage. So uh, when you get that crit chance as well with the Artemis attack, like Tonus just picked up, it's just crazy. It's it's it flies. It's amazing, and uh, I'm really hoping that both these runners get Mirage shots. So you can really see the absolute power. Absolutely. And uh, Seagull is entering the Furies here. We can probably do another couple of donations. All right. So for donations, we have four hundred dollars from High Five from Ryan. He says. Super proud of the Hades speedrun community, Legends Racing, and on commentary, pet that dog. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. And th thank you so much to everyone from the Hades yeah, community that has, been, that has been showing up tonight, putting in those donations, contributing to an absolute great cause in the Prevent Cancer Foundation. I'm so happy. Um, that you're all here to support us and support Siegel and Tonus as they make their way through this all-weapons run. And so we can see that Tonus actually did just pick up Mirage Shot, so you, you might notice that uh, these, these enemies really don't stand a chance. That room was basically perfect. And so that, that's one of the reasons that uh, we choose Poseidon's Cast. Instead, you, we, we could do this build where you have yes. Artemis cast, and then you find some Poseidon somewhere else in the build, and that's how you get your Mirage shot. The reason that we choose Poseidon cast is because of the gigantic AoE that it has. So even though the actual base damage of the cast is relatively low compared to uh, some of your other options, the AoE makes up for it by a whole lot. Yeah, we're gonna get to see some of the sick damage that Mirage shot does in this <laughs> learning fight. Single phasing here taking advantage of that AOE to take care of them. So let's see, let's see how the second phase looks for, for Tonus. Yeah, and we can we can see Tonus standing in what, uh, what we call the spot over here on the right hand side, trying to group up all four heads. Who's still doing a fantastic job, not quite getting the, uh, the four heads all with one single volley of casts, but it didn't take any time to play the cleanup there. Yep, Seagull collecting Artemis attack of his own there, hopefully finding that Mirage shot. Oh, and here's a chance here. It? Let's go. We go. And a palm too. You really love to see those palms. They're so important, especially on a common flood shot like, like Seagull has here. You, you really need those palms, uh, that extra base damage. Because of all of this, this multiplicative scaling, you really want that base number to be higher so that, you know, as you, as you multiply it, uh, you know, that, that base, that, that seed being higher at the start means that at the end you get something way, way larger. Absolutely. And we can see uh, he actually has, Siegel has a, a braid and an extra cast stone from the wells, which is, I don't, how does that math work out? So if you have an extra cast oh, stone, no. that's an extra, so, so that's a mirage shot, right? Because you have an extra <laughs> cast. So one extra cast stone is a mirage shot. And then you have a mirage shot on top of that. So that's four mirage shots. Left, and then you take that plus the 50% that you get from Braid, which is half a mirage shot, times the four mirage shots. It's like 12 mirage shots. We like to do a lot of math here in the Hayes community. Uh, most of it's wrong. Uh, most of it's just for fun. <laughs> and I, I, would, I wouldn't worry about the numbers too much. It's like, uh, it's, it's like um, whose line is it anyway? You know, all the, the numbers are made up. And uh, we just want the yeah, it's too explode. Exactly. I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> it's, uh, Speaking of nice not doing, uh, not doing the math is is actually apt here. The it took us a very long time. We knew that Beowulf was a very good weapon for a really long time, um, and we knew that this flood flare build was actually very powerful for a very long time. But every single time we played it, we, we would just ask ourselves, we were like, why is this doing so much damage? It feels like it's doing more damage than it's supposed to. And it wasn't until very recently, within the last several months, that we actually did look under the hood. And uh, that was when we finally noticed, you know, months and months later, after this had already been like a top meta aspect, uh, that we finally realized that the Mirage shot is uh, 
uh, that there's a bug, essentially, in the code that gives it that double damage. And so that's a fairly recent development in our understanding. Yeah, and one thing that you'll find, pretty much every Hades runner leaves these damage numbers on. They are able to be toggled off, but not a single one of us actually apparently reads them, because if we had just read the numbers, we would have realized that something was going horribly wrong, or in, I guess, our case, horribly right. Horribly right. I also just want to point out quickly that we have hit our 19th pet. So we have 19 pets to do. Let's go. We had 17 last time we checked, I think. I, I think the one that, the I ones think, I have uh, left. someone had done 18 already, I okay. think. Yeah. Here's the, uh, here's the EM3 Heroes fight with Beowulf. It's not quite as flashy as the, uh, the EM2 Heroes fight, but it's still going to be nice. This last phase here should go by real fast. Now be a good time for some donations. Yeah, please. Awesome. Please do. So we have one hundred dollars from Contra, who says today marks a year since I joined the Hades speedrunning community, and boy was joining one of the best decisions I've ever made. Shout out to all you fantastic gamers. May your megs always hit, and may your casts never knew high. <laughs> Thank you, Katra. <laughs> oh, new high casts. What a, what a new high cast is, uh, is, is affectionately named after uh, our w w longtime community member, New High. Uh, it's just when you miss. It's when you miss a cast that uh, it just goes sailing right past an enemy. <laughs> Especially at point blank. <laughs> the closer you are to an enemy, the more of a new high cast it is. And we say that with deep love for you, Hi. Absolutely. Uh, and that's the that fantastic one player. <laughs> Absolutely. So much better. One of the best. Than me. Yeah. <laughs> what was that, Seagull? One of those. One of the, one one of one the best. best players. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was just going to say real quick that we've gotten a lot of these donations from the Hades community tonight. And uh, yeah, I mean, it just goes without saying it's it's just one of the, the best places. That, it's the best place on the internet I've ever been a part of. And I'm, I'm so thankful for all of them. Uh, and for everything that they've done over the last couple of years, um, you know, to make these last couple of years, which have been tough for a lot of us, you know, just that little bit brighter. It's been uh, it's been so lovely having all of you, and uh, thank you so much. And thank you so much to this GDQ audience as well. Uh, all of your donations, letting us pet this dog so many times. Uh, it's it just makes me so happy. Yeah. Yeah, definitely big, big shout-outs to the community for being such an incredible place to be. Like, uh, the reason that we have these these mods and we have all this, like, metagame already, like, sorted out for things like races is because we've had, we have, you know, it's not just people doing runs on their own and posting uh, personal bests, which we have a lot of, but it's also live races, uh, tournaments, our own charity marathons that, uh, that have happened over the last, like, year or so. It's just everyone just keeps having ideas and keeps having things they want to do. And it's always just like a ton of fun to to just be a part of this community that just wants to do so much around this wonderful game. It really has taken on a life of its own. I would never have guessed that uh, when I bought that game and I said, "Let me learn how to play this Zagreus bow," that it would it would lead to thousands of hours of enjoyment and new friends and everything. And now's a, a really good time to get a good look at this uh, this EM3 fight. Let's finish this then. I'd love Theseus's chariot. It's so, so much goofy. fun. These, right, <laughs> the voice lines and everything associated with it. It's, it is incredible. Every time it gets destroyed and he just face plants in the dirt, I, I, I crack up <laughs> a little bit every single time. There's there's so much personality even in the you know, the animation of the little inch tall figure on my screen. It, it's just really always brings a smile to my face. And here goes uh, Tonus absolutely shredding EM4 Hades. The amount of damage that Tonus has right now is just completely out of control. And uh, 
I don't think this is really going to be much of a problem. Not yet. Oh, I know. Even something, me actually. watching, yeah, <laughs> watching this. It's, true, it's so difficult. It really, it really, really is so difficult to do these, and they just make it look so simple. Extreme Measures Four is. It's one of the. It's, it's an incredibly well designed fight because Hades moves it. It changes, but it changes in like such subtle ways to like subvert your expectation. So you're used to him doing, uh, you know, essentially the spear throw, and when you turn on that extreme measures four, he'll do the spear throw, but then he'll actually like double back and do it again. And so the, the ways that you're like so used to all of these attacks that Hades has been doing, you're like, all right, let me play the hard version. And they just, they put just enough of a twist on it, and you get knocked by it every single time when you first start learning that fight. Tonus just getting another few dog pets out there and going over to the Hera aspect of the bow. Meanwhile, we're gonna watch Seagull finish up this Beowulf aspect of the shield. Uh, no this, this weapon time. from Tonus will be the last weapon of this race, so it's the uh, it's the final stretch here. Um, I just quickly want to point out for for Seagull to watch and things to watch in this EM4 fight. Um, you know the mechanics of really good Beowulf gameplay are really important. Um, it's it's crucial that you get these these dash strikes out that um, you know they get your charged um, your charge attack out sooner so that you get these casts to come out faster. If you just do standing strikes, it takes a lot longer, and so they're doing really really rapid inputs. They they have to. Uh, press the cast button as many times as they have cast stones to get them into the shield so that they all explode when their attack releases. Uh, they have to, you know, dash back and forth picking these casts up. Um, it's just, uh, it, it's one of those things that watching it played really, really well is, uh, it's just a joy. Yeah, something else additionally uh, I've considered now is I was lucky enough to get that uh, hyper sprint rush delivery combo. Here, but uh, you only get the damage buff in that combo when your sprint is active, which is only for you know, half second after each uh, dash. And so with the way Beowulf works, a lot of times the buff has worn off by the time your cast actually hits. And so you have to be very careful to dash afterwards in order to get a new sprint going on. Uh, but there's also something about Beowulf where you lose uh, invincibility frames while the, uh, while the cast is going on. So you have to be very careful in fights like this. And there, we skipped the server summon. Uh, nice. So nice. After, after hitting that mid phase in the Extreme Measures 4 fight, Hades will always go right into healing animation. He heals like, like 1500 health every, I don't know, every like three seconds or so. And if you can out damage that and take him all the way to the bottom before he finishes the animation, then uh, he will not summon uh, Cerberus to mess up your day. So Cerberus is always a good boy, but he's extra good boy when you skip the Cerberus <laughs> summon. Yeah, and to celebrate not having Cerberus fight with you, hopefully how many he'll be, pets are we at? Hopefully he'll be home. <laughs> I hope so too. Well, he should be home. He didn't have. I think we were at 19 there. pets, right? We were at 19. Yep. Yes, we are still at 19. There he is. All right. I think I was. I think my last count was 15, so four more. Remember, we can get all the way up to 30, so if you'd like to send in more donations to get up to 30 packs and make our runners stay a long time around Cerberus, now is the time. Yep, this is it. And so here uh, we can see Tonus yeah, showing off the aspect of Hera, which is the bow aspect. And uh, much like Chaos, or not Chaos, uh, much like Beowulf, it is another cast aspect where the players are loading their cast into their arrow and uh, able to send it flying across the screen. The cast that we use on Hera is actually Aphrodite's cast because uh, it has a number of advantages when paired with this Hera bow. One is it does have a relatively high base damage, which we do want to take advantage of because Mirage Shot, while useful here, is not quite as useful as it is on Beowulf. It works as intended on Hera. So it is a nice boost to the damage, but not something that players are going out of their way to look for. One of the things that they are going out of their way to look for, though, I'm is that quick babies. reload from Hermes yeah. that uh, that Tonus just picked up. What that does is it makes these cast stones fall out of the enemy 
a little bit faster than usual. And so that goes a long way in these boss fights where your cast stone will not be stuck inside of the boss and you can use it again to DPS as quickly as possible. The other benefit of using, uh, it's called Crush Shot, is Hera's cast. The other benefit of using Crush Shot is that the cast falls immediately. Uh, a lot of the other casts, the cast will actually go sailing past an enemy if you, if you miss, but once it reaches the end of your attack, it just falls right to the ground and you can pick up your cast and use it again. And so here we Seagull can see Seagull getting an extra stone. Yep, an extra cast stone, which is, uh, that's a mirage shot right there. That's an extra 100% damage. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> A little bit of the dangerous curse going on though. I'm going to be sitting at one HP for quite a while. Yep, the, uh, a... the the downside there for that that extra cast stone that uh, Seagull just picked up is that all the attacks are making Seagull lose HP. Um, the important thing about these chaos curses that make you lose health for performing certain actions is they cannot kill you. They cannot spend a death defiance. They can only bring you down to one HP. Uh, and this is something that I think a lot of people are surprised by when they first learn it, but essentially it means if you can just not get hit, then they're free. Looks like a good spot. Simple task. Yeah, we can see here. Easy peasy. Nice and easy. It does make these uh, these numbskulls much scarier enemies than they normally are. Usually, uh, you know, they take basically one hit to die and you get to move on, but when even a single hit from, from a numbskull can take you out, you want to be slightly more careful than you used to be. But we can see here, Seagull has no fear. And I've escaped the curse now, I'm just recovering from the fallout of it, which is the 4 HP I have now. Now there's a heart. You gain another 25 HP from this reward and you'll be back to normal. Exactly. It's one of my favorite rewards, uh, not rewards, uh, Chaos Curses are the ones that drop your max HP. You can end up walking around with one out of one max HP, and it's, uh, it's very amazing. <laughs> I actually had, I had one HP in a run earlier today in, in uh, one of my runs. And another barge for Tonus. Tonus, how, how do you feel about how this run's going for you so far, this uh, this Hera run? I, it looks like you've got something pretty nice going on. It's very blessed, except for this. This will eat my, my Chaos. Ixion I just bought, True. which is kind of unfortunate, but I have the Snowburst, which is really nice for like additional AoE to like handle all the smallest fry and then have extra cast zone, have good palms, everything is just going going great. Actually everything has been has been going great for me the whole run. Outside of these barges, things have been looking pretty good for you. And here's a fountain, because just to keep that chaos into Elysium, why not? <laughs> so nor so what uh, what Tonus had picked up, the, the Light of Ixion, that will create a portal to chaos in the next eligible room. So if that last room had been a normal combat, the chaos gate would have been in there, but it would have been the last room in Asphodel, so you wouldn't have taken it because you would have just gone on to fight the mini boss afterwards anyway. So it would have been uh, essentially a waste of 55 balls and a potential increase in power. However, because Tonus got the fountain there, it does not. That room can't have a chaos gate in it, so he gets to wait until Elysium to use that chaos gate. That's so blessed. It, it, it's it's. Fantastic! It's really, really incredible. Yeah, I just want to. I guess I want to quickly talk about Snowburst because uh, I think Tonus mentioned <laughs> it there, but I don't think we've explained what Snowburst does. Not um, so when you when you press your cast button with with Beowulf in the previous run and, and with Hera here, um, it it loads that cast into your weapon to shoot on the next attack. Uh, what Snowburst does is when you press your cast button, it does a uh, an AOE, a point-blank AOE uh, Nova around Zagreus that does, you know, an amount of damage depending on, you know, the rarity and palms. Uh, it's really, really good for cleaning up tiny enemies because um, on Hera and Beowulf, you can just kind of mash that cast button really fast to load all your casts. And as you load them, because there's no, you know, animation cost or anything, um, those Novas all come out really, really quickly and can take care of things like the, the little soul enemies here in Elysium or tiny rats and sticks. Uh, it's a, a fantastic utility boon for, for this aspect. And uh, I'm glad Tonus is able to show it off here for all of you tonight. Now be a good time for some donations. Let's hear them. 
Awesome. We have $250 from Camel, who says, Hey, Siegel and Tonis, Camel here. You have both been cornerstones of this community for so long, and I am thrilled you made it to GDQ. Also, I don't know, but have you considered maybe using a certain aspect of the bow? <laughs> <laughs> it's too late, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, we already started the run. <laughs> Thank you so much, Cam. Uh, if you're familiar with the game, uh, the aspect of Rama, uh, Camel is the uh, fastest player that uses that bow, and by by a long shot, uh, oh my, and is currently the has this. the uh, the second fastest single run time, I believe, in uh, on the leaderboard with a bow that uh, many people for a very long time have considered to be very slow. So, uh, yeah. I mean, it was yeah. it was world record there for for a while. He he kicked off quite a uh, quite a a cascade of uh, monstrous runs in the last like four weeks. I mean, how many times has record changed on the the single weapon leaderboard? I think it's like it's got to be at least three. Yeah, and, within the space of about six weeks. Yeah, and we had we had not seen any change in you know the the top one on that leaderboard in months. I think I think a lot of people took it personally when they saw Rama at the top of the leaderboard. They're like, "Hang on, Rama's Rama's that slow bow. We can go faster than that." And everyone started grinding super hard to make sure Rama was not at the top. It was uh, it was a pretty great time watching everyone uh, put in the work to uh, to really optimize the run and and get the time down to where it is right now. Yeah. And, uh, and now it's actually a good time to point out that uh, for this all weapons run, uh, be it's, it's simply that, it's all weapons. You can use any aspects you want uh, for each of those six weapons. So if you prefer the Rama aspect of the bow, you can run the Rama aspect of the bow. Now it turns out both of these runners here ha enjoy this specific set of aspects of these weapons, but by no means are you forced to do so. There's a lot of player expression in Hades between the builds you choose and the aspects you, you choose to bring into some of these categories. and. Uh, it's a pleasure to watch some of the different play styles that, that come about, um, like Camel's incredible Rama gameplay, or uh, someone like uh, Lapras' uh, Hestia gameplay. Um, it, it's, it's just awesome. And all the Gilgamesh mains out there. You know, we yeah, see shout out to the Gilgamesh. We could probably do yeah, a few we, more donations here. Yeah. Just wanted to, really quick to say that we do care about like single aspect records too. Like mm -hmm. I started as, as a Chiron player and like the one of the biggest moments for me when I started speedrunning this was when I got the Chiron world record. So even if people only like to play one aspect, just just get in and just like show up in that very specific niche and, and it's gonna be as cool as, as going for like a the any big records, right? That everyone gets uh, really, really that's great point. the other great part with the community is everyone just gets in the personal best channel of the Discord. Everyone gets very excited about everything, whether it's a new <laughs> player's like first sub fifteen run or the new world record. Like they both get very similar amounts of uh, attention. I, it's it's hard to even express how positive the community is. Like it, it really is just such a an absolute joy to be a part of and, and get to see everyone, you know, waking up every day, seeing 150 missed messages in the uh, in the personal best Discord and, and seeing, oh no, what's happened? Is it uh, is it another Chiron world record? Is it another, you know, who knows what it was? <laughs> and that's that's so much fun. You just get Christmas every few weeks. Goes. Yeah, and let's please as uh, as Siegel start comes to wrap up Elysium and Tonus is going through these pads. Let's hear a few more donations. For sure. So we have one hundred dollars from Kenora, who says Siegel and Tonus, knowing you two has definitely been some of the biggest highlights out of my last year, no either in Hades or out. May geometry be ever in your favor and the rats be few. Love you both dearly. Thanks, you can do another. You know, you For sure. We have a $40 donation from Rose Garden who says, I see we're running mods so no one can get Vereen, but there's still a chance to latch your cast. Watch out for the lake. <laughs> we never did get around to explaining that, did we? No, we, we never did, huh? You would All right. take away Vereen. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So, <laughs> so you may have noticed at the start of each one of these runs, if you have eagle eyes, uh, that 
on the very first boon screen that these runners have been offered, uh, they've been given the choice between all four core boon slots. What we call the cores are the attack, special, cast, and dash. Um, this is to increase the consistency of the run and make sure you start at least with the very first boon that you're looking for in a racing environment. Uh, it really sucks on an aspect like Hera. If you don't get your cast right away, um, it just, you know, it's just not fair in a racing environment. So, um, so we adjusted in that way. Uh, this uh, mod came about mostly because of my AGDQ run last year, uh, where on Beowulf I didn't find Bloodshot. Uh, and so the anti Vareem mod was born. Thank you very much for the name. <laughs> Nobody has things named after them for good things, do they? It's a real shame. <laughs> But that was the, so uh, see. the GDQ community's introduction to Hades was uh, rolling twice and not getting that boon. That's true. <laughs> well, that was when, uh, you know, we, we had to, we emailed the devs even, and, and we said, hey, is is the priority on this boon set correctly? Are, are we actually likely to see Blood Flare here? I'm like, yeah, it's, 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 it is coded as intended. Yeah, we even had, a, got uh, lucky. had something in the code that we were like, oh, well, this is clearly, clearly we can see here that they've done something wrong. And we're so smart, we found it. And we've seen it because we, we don't get this boon ever. And they basically said, hey, take like another look at it. You're, like you're looking at it upside down, right? <laughs> <laughs> Try again. And uh, they were, yeah, it was just our paranoia, as it turned out. By the way, Tonus, I think, is coming up on time here. Tonus, feel free to call that out whenever Let's finish this. you deal the last bit of Hades health. I'll try to remember. <laughs> this has been an awesome race. They've been pretty close the whole way through. They've been within a biome of each other for pretty much the whole race. It's hard to ask for much more, especially with these... Uh, these these mod settings that we have where they got you know all the mini bosses are available and, and things like that so they, they both put on a very impressive performance this has been an extremely fast run especially for the em4 incentive did we see any tiny burns i don't think i think, so. I think we dodged all of them on oh, now well, there's, there's anthony big big brother anthony and so yeah and so tonus is almost done here and, uh, And more time. 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 Nice. GG's. Congrats, Tonus. Good job, Tonus. Thank you. Such and so you're not far behind at all. Finishing up the Absolutely final path of sticks. And do we have any donations that we uh, can read off as he yeah, of moves into this last fight? So, so we have five Kong. dollars from Cherry Dad, who says, hi, it's me. I'm the Gilgamesh main. Pause up. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and uh, Tonus is going to go pet the dog we... a little bit, perhaps? Yeah, what, what's our, uh, yes, you are. What, are we what are we landing at for, for pets? What are we cutting So we're on say? 19. We are just shy of 20. If someone has just under $200, I'll let you know if we hit it. Fish delivery for the head chef. Oh, we can get one more pet for Cerberus, right? Absolutely. It's been such a good boy this run. We'll see if he, see if he uh, smacks me around a little bit before we make that judgment, maybe. <laughs> no, what am I saying? He's always a very good boy, regardless. Yes, All dogs are good boys. On, the, <laughs> on Tonus's <laughs> screen, you may have noticed turning in a whole ton of fish there, so the text goes off the top of the screen. That is, uh, is an absolute classic. You'll love to see it. We'll get to enjoy this EM4 music one last time as Seagull wraps the fight up. We're getting to see a lot of this. I, I just love you get two Doomstones, a deuce ahead from the power couple. That The whole first phase of, of the EM4 is so wacky. Oh, and the lasers too, the, with the pushback. And I'm back, that's another one of the, the super giants little uh, sticking their tongue out moment at someone who's uh, like learning the fight and fixed it being tricky. That's true. Yeah, so usually what you can do is you can uh, get right on top of, of Hades oh. whenever he does this. Yeah, whenever he does those big lasers, but in the Extreme Measures fight, he actually pushes you away. So you can't hug your dad 
in extreme measures for almost got the skip there, but he, he hid from us right at the end. Yeah, and actually, when, one final when, phase. Is, when he went into his lasers, I tried to uh, to, to hug him as, as he would in the normal fight, and the knockback pushed me into two of those uh, green pots, dealing like oh, no. a ton of damage. It just got half of it again there. My, uh, my, re my, my normal reflexes to the normal fight are uh, betraying me. Also, we've hit our 20th pet for Cerberus. Oh, this is on it. There we go. All right, gee, that's time. Congratulations to both racers. The race was honestly incredible. Super glad to be a part of it. I can't believe how, how fast they both just blitzed through that, especially with EM4. Uh, I, it's right, just, let's catch it's amazing. Fish. These runners are so good. I'm so glad I was able to just sit here and witness it. <laughs> One last fish for, uh, for Seagull here. Oh, all that Animal Crossing finally takes off for something. Hey. I just gotta go give, give Cerberus the rest of, rest of my pets. And any more uh, donations for us? Welcome, my son. Yeah, absolutely. So we have $250 from SciGuy007, who said, Thanks to everyone involved with GDQ for being awesome. More pets for Cerberus. Thanks so much for helping us hit 20 pets. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to everyone who donated for these Hades incentives and to all the other incentives and everything going on at GDQ this week. It has been awesome so far, and we have some really good stuff left to go this weekend. Uh, I, I can't wait. I'm sorry he disturbed you, Cerberus. I think this is the 20th I mean, and nice final pet for Cerberus. Uh, in case I missed any off stream later, I'll be sure to give him many, many more uh, for all of you who, who donated for it. But I, I believe that is that is 20, so we've fulfilled the incentive. 40 total pets for Cerberus across uh, Thomas and I. Three Extreme Measures 4 runs. Tons of money raised from you guys uh, over the course of this run. It's absolutely a pleasure. So uh, thank you all. I had a you should visit the head chef. Here, you can have these, chef. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, GDQ, so much for having us. All right, now for a quick word from Dangan Entertainment. Dangan Entertainment is a publishing company striving to share amazing indie games with the world. They help indie developers publish their games on PC, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, and more. They have a growing catalog of over 25 games spanning a wide variety of genres. And you can find them at dangenentertainment.com. That is D-A-N-G-E-N -E entertainment.com. All right, and now we will be taking a short break. We'll see you right after this.
All right, we have a few more donations for you right now. So we have $500 from Kapura, who said, Love to see Hades capping off a great day of races. Casually, I was pushing my own time, so it's great to see it played at the highest level. Thank you so much, Kapura. We have $100 from MXW who said, My father recently had surgery for cancer. He managed to catch it early due to routine screenings and has an excellent chance for a full recovery. That's why the work that PCF does is so important. I was so excited for the Hades run, the game that got my wife and me through the beginning of the pandemic. For both of us, it was so easy for one more run to turn into five or six at a time when we really needed the distraction. Thank you, GDQ and PCF, for your amazing work. And thank you, MXW, for your donation. We have $50 from Toast, who says, Love me some Hades, love me some charity. Let's hit that two mil. All right, we have $250 from Babinski who says, GDQ has already been awesome, but now you added petting dogs? Please take my money. This is in honor of our best of puppers who we lost to liver cancer earlier this year, his younger pupper sister who beat cancer this year, and all of the puppers joining us for the last week on our own couches at home for this incredible marathon. Wow, what an incredible evening we've been having. Let's send some big claps and chat for our runners Siegel and Tonus yet again. Now that our race has come to an end, I will be leaving you in the very capable care of Iggy Zig. Thank you so much for having me on as one of your hosts for tonight. Remember to keep sending in your donations for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. As always, my name is Lana Roos and I am signing off for tonight. We have an interview with our Hades runners right away. Take it away. Thank you so much, and welcome back, AGDQ 2022 online chatters uh, and viewers. I am Jay Obs, and I am joined by Siegel and Tonus, who just had a fantastic Hades race. I mean, I love watching Hades runs, and getting to see two people go up against some of the toughest challenges in that game was super fun. Uh, how are you both feeling? Let's start with you, Tonus. How are you feeling after the race? Yeah, it was good. I got away with a lot of things in that race. So. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was it was blessed. That's okay. all I can say. And Seagull, how about you? I was not maybe so much on the on the blessed end of things, but uh, play felt solid and uh, didn't hit that penalty box. So that's honestly that's really all I can ask for in, uh, <laughs> in a race like this, especially with those extreme measures packs. That's true. That's true. Uh, I wanted to get into. I mean, hey, actually, I'm just going to go jump around in the order I was going to ask you things because uh, I'll ask a little bit about death defiances here. Um, so I happened to notice myself, it seemed like, Tonus, you were a bit more kind of aggressive and unafraid to use those death defiances, even as kind of Extreme Measures 4 came up. Uh, while, while Siegel, you seemed just a little bit more conservative with them, just wanting to make sure that you still had a lot of those death defiances available. Um, is that... Uh, especially like Tonus, is that something where you're just confident that things are going to show up in the shop for you and you're going to be able to get them back? Or is it just kind of the uh, up to every run, how it goes? Uh, why, why don't you all kind of explain how you, how you um, play when it comes to those death defiances? And Tonus, again, you could start here. Yeah, it was, it's actually kind of funny because I'm in the community. I'm known as the guy who picks up most health and just wants to <laughs> play everything super safe. But I think it's just that I haven't actually played EM4 that much, so I kind of forgot about it half the time. So I was just playing normally and just like assuming everything will be okay. And then <laughs> there were some runs definitely where I had to buy more Death Defiances to get through everything. So probably not the way you want to do it, but in the end, didn't hit the penalty box. So, so I'm happy how it, how it <laughs> went. Just don't do that at home. <laughs> And Siegel, any thoughts on that? Are you maybe going to pull some tips from that and just be like, I'm just going to go more aggressive now? Or you, you... I was, uh, I was, I was, I think rightfully a little scared because uh, <laughs> in a couple of, in the last couple of like practice runs of the back half doing the, the M4 fights, uh, in some of the runs where I had where the build wasn't quite as strong, like obviously you saw us really shred through that fight a couple of times. 
Uh, in some of the fight, in some of the times when it wasn't as strong, I was in that penalty box one or two times per fight sometimes, and so I wanted to be absolutely sure that I could, uh, even if it was a little on the slower side, even if I was being more conservative leading up to it, that I was still able to to clear the run without being uh, stuck in the stuck in the punishment box. Right. Very understandable. And I mean, honestly, you two finished so close to each other in the grand scheme of how a roguelite run can go. Uh, I thought that was just incredible. And with this being an all weapons run, uh, I'm curious if either of you have a favorite weapon specifically in an all weapons run, like not just your your favorite weapon that you like to do kind of regular single weapon runs with, but in an all weapons run, is there one where you're like, okay, once I get to the rail, I'm feeling good or something, or is there a difference there? And Siegel, we'll start with you this time. I think generally the the Eris rail, uh, part of it is just that it's, it's for me, it's the, it's the most comfortable. It's kind of uh, like the commentators discuss, it's maybe fallen off a little bit recently as we've gotten better at some of the cast aspects. But uh, it's it, it, the reason I think it's 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 fallen off is because uh, you know the performance of everyone is elevating so much, and maybe at a mid level, Eris is always the best, but at high level, it starts to wobble a little bit. And uh, you know, sometimes I just need at least a mid level run, and Eris is always going to at least give me you know I'm going to get that lightning attack, I'm going to eventually get that title dash, and uh, if I can just get that, then there's enough to at least push my way through it. It's very comfy. It's what I started on, started started speedrunning the game on. And uh, it always, always feels nice and familiar, I guess, to, uh, to play through. Like, you don't always need the rockets, you don't always need the cluster bombs, that, yeah. that kind of the thing. The excitement right? of potentially getting it, though, is... Uh, the of course. Electric. Of so. course. Tonus, for you, is, is it a different weapon? Is it the same weapon? What's kind of your favorite to, in, in these uh, longer runs? Yeah, specifically, usually for all weapons, I, I almost always start going from fist to sword and, because they are the most inconsistent. And then the th third weapon is always Achilles. And when I get to that point where I just like done with the most inconsistent incons weapons and get to play just fly like over the over the screen on Achilles, that's that's the most that's the best moment for me. Yeah, I mean, I think on on this race, my Achilles wasn't as good as it could have been, but I think. It's just so fun to play. It's just so good. <laughs> I think that's a good, that kind of sums up the this race and like this game. It's just so fun to play, man, in every single style. Um, now, speaking of different styles, a lot of the categories for Hades are timed in-game time, but these kind of multi-weapon categories are timed in real time. So how were you able to kind of work at the, that fast decision making? I mean, and being able to, to quickly identify what choices are available to you. Uh, Siegel, if you want to start with this one. Yeah, uh, for me, it was a little more of a natural progression, uh, more because I tend to be an impatient person in general and like to do <laughs> things quickly in general. So uh, a lot of the times I was running for in-game time in the single runs already had some really decent, uh, decent real time things. And really from there, it's, it's just building up your library of game knowledge understanding what's costing you time, what's not costing you time, what's faster, what's not, making these split-second decisions in your head. And uh, it's a lot of stuff I was already doing and really just working the pauses out, working the thinking out, and just knowing what's, what's definitely good, finding it visually and, and moving and grooving from there. It's, uh, it's definitely something that I've gotten a lot better at over time, but it was also something I was naturally inclined to. Like, I'm someone that will miss the good boon, like the rush delivery offered even in an in-game time run just because I'm rushing through it and my whole stream chat yells at me. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, it's just, <laughs> just how it goes sometimes with me. And, and Tonus, for you, was there anything special about kind of picking up that, those quick decisions? Right, so I started as very strictly just running in game time. Like, I thought running real time was the dumbest thing I've ever heard. So <laughs> but then by playing in game time runs over and over, I just like the decision making was just so like ingrained to my brain so it was just like making those decisions fast didn't really make any difference at that point anymore and it's just the, the categories that play for real time are just i've now i've been just playing them so much and i just love them also just comes very naturally at this point that makes sense. I noticed, uh, I think some of the more kind of exciting moments for me sometimes are literally when I watch you all re-roll twice in a, <laughs> like in a shop or, or off of a, a specific thing. Like Seagull, I think you double re-rolled on Artemis in Elysium um, it, it, during the sword run. Was there something specific you were looking for there and you just didn't care about anything else? Or was it more of you just kept getting junk thrown at you? For a duo boon between Artemis and Aphrodite, there, who I had on the, the special, the, the boon is called a Heartrend. 
and it turns that 3x crit multiplier to a 4.5x uh, if the opponent has the weak applied, which, because it's on the special, you're usually going to have. And the size of the crit bonus is, you know, it scales your damage higher if you have a higher crit rate. And so on a weapon like Nemesis, which with the Artemis attack, you're at it's in a 50% crit rate, it's a huge, huge boost in your damage. And at that time, I was missing some scaling on my attack. I didn't have any chaos attack didn't have any jerky, I didn't, there was really nothing on, on the tip of the sword. I was relying mostly on the dash damage. And so that was my big bet to kind of uh, seal that damage up a little bit. Didn't come through, but uh, you know, I think I got Lightning Rod anyway, which is a fan favorite. <laughs> yeah, and, and it happens, right? That's the random element of it. Uh, and I noticed uh, for you, Tonus, in the shield run, the Beowulf aspect, that you got the Mirage shot in Asphodel, like, it seems super early. Were you feeling really great after that? I mean, you'd already had a, an incredibly solid run. I think, like, you didn't get the barge until, like, bow, right? So everything was going pretty well for you. How were you feeling after uh, getting Mirage Shot so early? Yeah, it's just seeing the green boon that you are going to need at any point. I think the Fist run was, was even more blessed because I was playing God's Pride, which does not give me any extra chance to getting duo boons. So Mirage Shot is something I, like, you can almost... You can't current guarantee it, but you you almost always still get. So it it's just very blessed to finally get it. But for that fist run, I can, I can say it was like, oh, finally, because we've had some practice <laughs> runs where I just never find it. So yeah. fair enough. All right. Well, I wish I had more time to talk to you all about this fantastic game in this race, but I'm gonna let uh, you all just go and celebrate with your community. That seem fantastic. They just seem like a, a really great community. And we're definitely going to make sure we let Tonus sleep <laughs> because I believe it is very early in the morning. So thank you all so much for joining me. Again, congrats on a fantastic race. And I am going to go ahead and throw it back to our host so that way we can continue on with some fantastic speedruns. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jay Hobbs, and thank you, Seagull and Tonus, for that extremely erudite post-race analysis of that fantastic Hades run. And welcome, welcome back, one and all, to Awesome Games Done Quick 2022 online, powered by Twitch and raising money to support the Prevent Cancer Foundation. My name is Ziggy Zig. I am your host, here with you this fine Friday night, bringing you two speedruns full of thrills and adventure and egregious archaeological theft. Up next is an any percent run of Uncharted 2 Among Thieves, performed by Matt Matt. He's got a thrilling one lined up with epic action and a pretty generous amount of cool glitches. It is the best of both worlds, which is, of course, the magic of speedrunning. And it is coming up in a little bit. And what is that I see on the donation total? Are we very nearly approaching another milestone donation total? We are less than $120,000 away from meeting 2 million. Is this really happening again? If you want it, you're welcome to take it because we have a whole bunch of bid wars lined up all through the last day of the event. So you, with your, with your, with your donation, in addition to helping out a fantastic cause, that'll be your opportunity to actually actively participate in this event, deciding character names, deciding character choices, and as well as some really, really silly sound effects for the Tetris Grandmaster run. It is going to be a treat. And I use that in quotation marks. So go to gamestonequick.com slash donate. Put in all your information on the landing page, your name, your amount, your awesome comment that I would love to read. And right at the bottom where it says, do you want to select incentives? Click yes. And then follow from there. So let's get those donations in. Let's help out a fantastic cause and let's get that 2 million and beyond. While Uncharted is setting up, let's go ahead and spend a little time with Scent, who has shown up to heed that all-time classic clarion call prizes 
I hear the call and I cannot resist. Thank you so much, Iggy. And hello, everyone. Welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick Online 2022. My name is Sent. I'm here to tell you about some of the amazing prizes that you can win by donating from now until the end of Wario Land Shake It, which is coming up right after this Uncharted 2 run. So if you haven't already gotten your donations in today, please, please make sure to get some donations in so you can win some of these amazing prizes. And make sure to get your donations in because they are going directly to an amazing cause in the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Let's take a look at some of the cool stuff we've got. From Cute Monster Props here, we have this absolutely lovely uh, Karen's Obel. Uh, I'm going to hold it up for the camera here in the light so you all can see the detailing on both sides. Uh, this is, of course, the currency in Hades for Karen's shop. But also, in mythology, it was said that you needed to place a gold coin underneath your tongue when you died so that you'd be able to take it to the afterlife and pay uh, Karen the ferryman to ferry you across the river Styx. So, real quick, I'm just, I'm just going to... Okay, this this might be a problem. Uh, we'll we'll deal with that later. No worries. <laughs> From Pearl Pop, we have a trio of absolutely beautiful perlers here. Uh, we've got this lovely Wario perler, Wario Shake It, coming up soon. Look at how uh, solid the melt on this is. You can't see through the back at all. That is a sign of perler quality right here when it just looks like a sprite given form. Absolutely amazing. We've also got this classic style Donkey Kong. Get ready, he's gonna throw some barrels down some scaffolding at you. That's what he does. Donkey Kong, everyone. It looks great, right? Looks like a sprite straight out of the arcade game because Pearl Pop is amazing when it comes to these perlers. And last but not least, we have the Hero of Time with you know, the most Link weapon, I think, uh, out of the entire series, the shovel. Like, I mean, come on, the Master Sword's kind of useful, but it certainly can't help you dig up treasure. The shovel can. Do not underestimate Link with a shovel. Thank you so much to Pearl Pop for all three of those perlers, and I believe they are each an individual $10 minimum donation to get in on. So get those donations in. Now, from Vats of Goop for a $15 minimum donation, we have this lovely Eurydice print here from Hades. So cool. I mean... Vats of Goop's art style is always so distinct. It was actually really funny. We didn't have this in the tracker when it uh, showed up uh, at the studio. We unboxed it. Uh, Shout held it up to me. And he was like, hey, Sam, we got an unclaimed uh, poster here. What do we do about that? And I'm like, that is a Vats of Goop print. I'm going to go uh, hit them up on Discord real quick. And sure enough, it was absolutely amazing. Genuinely looks like it could be concept art for the game itself. It is so on point. Huge shout-outs to you for sending it out to us. $15 minimum donation. Again, please make sure to get those donations in. From our friends over at Escalier Studios, we have this absolutely incredible picture. <laughs> picture. More. Shadow box of uh, Hades here. Uh, I mean, just look at it. It's got all the different layers of uh, the underworld from the game here as you rise up from to and escape to the surface. And way at the bottom there might be a little hard to see, Angel. I don't know if you can help me, I, but I, there, there is Cerberus. <laughs> Cerberus is there. You can pet the dog in this shadow box if you win it. I believe it's a $25 minimum donation. Please get those donations in. You got to get them in before the end of Wario. Shake it. Now, if you haven't already gotten a $50 minimum donation in today, you definitely should because we have two absolutely great day prizes. We have this lovely collection of 12 Pokemon hats. We've got all your hat favorites. We've got the uh, Poplio. We've got Sableye. We have... Uh, <laughs> we, we have Hoppip. I, I know that's a Hoppip. Come on. Sit knows Pokemon for sure. Torchic. I can do this. I'm very confident in my Pokemon abilities. We've got Pikachu. Who doesn't love Pikachu? Love the ears on this one, by the way. They are super soft and squishy. We've got a Mudkip. Everyone needs a Mudkip. We, of course, have a Magikarp. Be kind to it because it will evolve into a Gyarados hat one day. We've got ourselves the Slowbro hat. We've got a Ditto, I think, right here. Is that going to be Ditto? It's going to be Ditto, and it's adorable. Uh, and we have a Piplup. Now, for those of you a student counting, that's only 10 hats. There are two more. Um, we have we have a Shiftry? Is Shift it Shiftry? Yeah, it's Shiftry. It's Shiftry. Yeah. I remembered a Pokemon. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, we have, um, I'm uh. going to go with... Uh, Sailor Moon's cat. We have Sailor Moon's cat. That's all the Pokemon you could absolutely need. $50. All 12 hats come as a set. Thank you so much to Jess Kiros for sending those out to us. They are absolutely incredible. Also for a $50 minimum donation until the end of Wario Land. We have this incredible 
oil on canvas, Zagreus' first sunrise painting. This is such a beautiful piece here. I'm gonna shift it for you so you can see it in uh, the different lights we've got going on. It is, it's just a magnificent piece to behold. It is old school oil on canvas. When you look up at it real close, you can see like different textures and elevations on the canvas from all the times the artist has gone back over it with different colors and uh, uh, different types of paint to create that beautiful shading effect. So amazing. Uh, thank you so much. It's a $50 minimum donation from now until the end of Wario Land. Make sure to get those donations in. When I'm talking about prizes, always got to talk about our grand prizes because we have two amazing ones. And you only have one more day to get your donations in to be entered for both of them. Now, all you have to do to be entered into our grand prizes is donate a total of $250 throughout the event. So $50 right now, going to get you into everything I just talked about. And it's going to get you one fifth of the way there at the very least towards being entered into both of these grand prizes. Up here, from our friends over at Skytech Gaming, we have a great Skytech Gaming Mark 9 Gaming PC. Absolutely incredible machine. Again, 3070 Ti GPU. You can head over to gamesdonequick.com to check out the rest of the specs on it. But it's incredible. You definitely want it. Beast of a machine. And then right here on my other side, from our friend David Heroic Replicas, we have a trio. Not just the shield, but three different pieces of an amazing Zelda replica set. We have a Dark Link style, the Master Sword with, uh, you know, black hilt, the black pommel, some silver uh, accessories going on on it, and a cool Triforce engraving in the hilt of the blade. Uh, you have this lovely Master Shield right here, as you can see. It is just Hylian a stunning shield. display piece. It is a Hylian Shield. <laughs> Thank you very much to production for yelling at me about that. I am incorrect. <laughs> What else is new? What else is new? This is cool. Wait, that's not new. You all knew that. But there is one new thing because for this event, Dave from Hero Replicas has also made us a super cool megaton hammer, 30 pound solid metal hammer. You got to head over to gamesdonequick.com to check a picture of it. And while you're there, you should take a look at all of the other information on the site because it's got everything you need. It's got information on all the prizes you can win coming up later tonight and tomorrow. And there's some cool stuff in there for sure. I'm going to tell you, it's got information on all of the incentives we currently have open. There are some good ones. Remember, you don't have to donate specifically for the prizes. You still get to put your donations towards incentives. And of course, it's going to tell you about all of the amazing speedruns you can watch. Speedruns like Uncharted 2. You don't want to miss a minute of it. Iggy, why don't you take it away? Thank you very much, Sent, for that always wonderful prize section of prizes that you are showing us. I'm noticing a sharp uptick in $25 donations. I wonder what that could be for. I am wondering what that could be for. That PS5, most likely. Maybe you have until the end of the run after this one to get yourself in the running to win one of those. And all those beautiful $25 donations, how about we get those towards towards meeting the incentive of the difficulty upgrade of a Shoujo Senshi Sailor Moon R later this morning. Usagi is going to be fighting evil by moonlight. And with your help, she can upgrade to hard difficulty by daylight. So we can have a more fantastic run in that respect. So please, let's get those donations in for it. Alrighty, we have uh, Chucky... Smalls with a $250 donation. His comment simply reads, Woo! I definitely agree, and that's how I'm feeling. And alrighty, Mad Mad, everybody, is ready. He's ready to thrill and to break level geometry, so get hype for his any percent run of Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. 